and communications technology, humans have been storing, retrieving, manipulating, If you manage a team, you should be using Monday.com. It's a platform to manage any team and any project. Marketing campaigns, classic project management. What is information technology? IT, or information technology, refers to the development, maintenance, and use of computer software, hardware, and networks. It includes their use for the processing and distribution of data. Data refers to information, facts, statistics gathered together for reference, storage, or analysis. Software includes all the computer programs within a computer. Computers cannot work without software. Hardware, in this context, refers to the physical components of a computer system. The screen, mouse, and motherboard, for example, are hardware items. Information technology is commonly used as a synonym for computers and computer networks, but it also encompasses other information distribution technologies such as television and telephones. Many different products or services within an economy are associated with information technology. What is the difference between information technology and computer science? Computer science focuses on efficiently programming computers. Computer scientists use mathematical algorithms. They study theoretical algorithms and the practical problems that exist in implementing them through computer software and hardware. AI, computer graphics, and programming are subfields of computer science. Software engineering is also part of computer science. Information technology, on the other hand, involves installing, organizing, and maintaining computer systems. It also includes designing and operating databases and networks. Thank you for watching this Markets Business News video on information technology. Information technology is the use of computers to store, retrieve, transmit, and manipulate data, or information, often in the context of a business or other enterprise. IT is considered to be a subset of information and communications technology. Humans have been storing, retrieving, manipulating, and communicating information since the Sumerians in Mesopotamia developed writing in about 3000 BC, but the term information technology in its modern sense first appeared in a 1958 article published in the Harvard Business Review. Authors Harold J. Levitt and Thomas L. Whistler commented that the new technology does not yet have a single established name. We shall call it information technology. Their definition consists of three categories, techniques for processing, the application of statistical and mathematical methods to decision making, and the simulation of higher order thinking through computer programs. The term is commonly used as a synonym for computers and computer networks, but it also encompasses other information distribution technologies such as television and telephones. Several products or services within an economy are associated with information technology, including computer hardware, software, electronics, semiconductors, internet, telecom equipment, and e-commerce. Based on the storage and processing technologies employed, it is possible to distinguish four distinct phases of IT development, pre-mechanical, mechanical, electromechanical, electro and electronic. This article focuses on the most recent period, which began in about 1940. Hi, this is Patricia Lin here from WealthMastery.Asia. Now, I'm not here to talk about e-commerce, okay, so just watch on. I'm actually recording this video in the comforts of my own home, now in the hope that you are staying safe in these uncertain times. 
Now, I know how badly the COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted our lives. Now, I've not even talked about home-based learning yet, or HBL, right? And if you are a parent like myself, you'll actually know what I mean. Now, thank God it's the June. Wait, no, it's the May holidays right now. Well, our lives are definitely impacted regardless of where you come from. Whether you're working a 9-to-5 job or you are a business owner just like myself, it's now time for us to start working together to rebuild our lives back. Now, for a limited time, I've decided to hold a brand new online masterclass called the Internet Empire Mastery, where I'll be sharing with you three ways you can use to create multiple streams of income through the internet. Now, I want to be very clear that this is not just about e-commerce or dropshipping, uh, but instead, I'm going to reveal a wide spectrum of strategies that I have actually used for the last 12 years to create multiple sources of online income and how you can actually do what I've done so. Now, here's what I'll be covering during the webinar. Firstly, I'll show you how to sell products online. This will be highly useful for you if you are a business owner with a struggling retail store. And I'll actually show you how to take your current physical products and bring them online so that you can even your business can thrive even without a physical store. Or maybe you're someone with an expertise. You could be a gym instructor, a swimming coach, a chef, or maybe you're really good at parenting. As long as you have a passion for something that you're good at, I'll show you how to take that skill set and transform it into a digital product that people would be happy to pay for. Or maybe instead of products, what if you are someone who has a service that you like to offer instead? You could be a business consultant, a graphics designer, a real estate agent, or maybe you like to do some fitness coaching, which is something that a lot of people are looking for online right now. I'll show you how to get clients online, clients that are more than willing to pay for your services, even if you can't Hey, what's up? John Sonmez here from simpleprogrammer.com. So I got a question about information technology. What's that? <laughs> I almost tossed this question out because I was like, really? But then I realized that there's actually some value in this question. So let me read it here. Uh, this is from Oad, and he says, he's not sure about his name. He says, Oad pronounced Oad, I guess. Okay, well, I guess, I'll, I'll guess Oad too then. He says, hi, John. I tried to look after videos about IT at your channel, and I found none. I hope you can share with others by posting a video about what your thoughts on, on this is. Jobs, what is IT, uh, is it worth it? Uh, and he says, no, I'm not lazy. I looked after information and I actually found some pretty okay stuff. I guess I just want to hear one of your stories about your experience, if there is any with the subject. Thank you very much for reading this email. Have a wonderful day. All right, so I don't mean to, I'm not, not making, don't mean to make fun of you. This is a, a a valid question, I think, is because, and the reason why this is a valid question, I mean, because some of you are like, oh, that's kind of dumb, like IT, what, you know, what is that, information technology, what are you even talking about here? That, that, that's the problem, <laughs> is I think it's pretty ambiguous. I was just thinking about this, right, when, when I was thinking about tossing out the question, and I said, well, wait a minute, what does IT actually mean today, right? What is, what is it? What does it mean? Information technology, right? We, we kind of just toss that around and we don't really know what it means. And it was a little bit more distinct, I think, maybe 10 years ago. But now, what, what, is it, what does it involve? Especially for those of you that are kind of new software developers, you know, some of you are confused. Honestly, I've gotten some emails. What's the difference between IT and software development and what does it encompass, right? In the corporate world, you know, we, could, we call it IT and, you know, and, and we kind of just know what that is, but, but what does it actually mean? So IT information technology, this is my definition of it. It's basically the entire scope of all of the jobs and everything that's related to computers and technology in business, okay? So that, that sort of changed a lot over, over the, the years, right? Because we used to have IT people, and IT people were the people that would come and set up your computer at your corporate job and install Microsoft Windows on there and image your system, and if your hard drive crashes, they would fix it, and they would set up your network and all that, and I think there's still 
you know, that, that part of IT, but IT is also now the DevOps people, the, the developer operations people who are part developer and part operations people who do the infrastructure, right? And also like make sure that the software gets deployed, right? And IT is technically you, right? As, as a software developer, right? You're IT as well because you're part of IT. I think that was always, always kind of part of it. So information technology is sort of that whole big scope of every single job role and responsibility that has to do with computers in, in the business setting. That's that's how I would define it. Some people might define it differently, but that's that's really what it is. So the IT industry is that that entire entire industry that and, and it's really big, right? But a lot of things are changing, right? Because again, we used to use the term to talk about the help desk people, the, the people that would set up your computer and networking and stuff. But a lot of times now we've got the cloud, right? We've got AWS, right? Where we're basically using virtual machines and we're using cloud-based hosting. And so a lot of companies aren't, they don't even really have IT. They're outsourcing IT essentially because that infrastructure, those, those guys that used to run those network wires and used to you know, give you an IP address, they're not needed anymore because we were able to solve that with technology. Now, there's still plenty of those people around, but I'm just saying in general, a lot of companies where IT was sort of when I was you know, earlier in my software development career, it was just like, duh. Now it's actually, there's a lot of new software developers that are like, well, what is that? I don't, I don't understand it. Don't, don't we just spin up a, a, a machine like in the cloud? Like, what, what is IT? I don't, I don't get it. Like, there's software developers and we write code and, and that's it. And then we have DevOps guys and we deploy the code. That's it. And that's, you know, IT in, in some companies has been eliminated based, based on that, right? You don't necessarily have to have a network guy. You don't necessarily have to have a help desk guy because you've got this, uh, you know, this ability as this technology has changed. So that, that's really what it is. And that's, you know, and it's, it's something that, like I said, is evolving. And so, you know, hopefully that clears up. Some of you are like, oh, this is like, what, what are you even talking about, John? This is like dumb. I, I get that, you know, if, if, you, if you've been in the industry for a while, but I want to make this video for some of the, you newer developers that don't quite understand like this, because you might have never seen IT like, like we used to, right? When you used to have to, you know, get a subnet address and, and split up uh, the, the IP and, and put the subnet mask in and, and all this stuff, and you had to have someone that, that knew how to do all that stuff because now a lot of it is automatic or, or you don't need that or you're running wires and twisting you know, cables and all, all, that, all that kind of stuff, right? And there, there'll still always be some of that, but, but a, lot of, a lot of companies can, can actually exist with everyone remote and you don't actually have a real IT department in the company and that's, uh, I think that's a wave of the future. I think that that kind of IT is gonna disappear, but the, the general IT that includes software developers and all of those other roles, that's always going to be around, obviously. So, all right. If you like this video, if you want to get more videos like this one, where I answer questions and give you life advice and tell you all kinds of all kinds of fun stuff and, and stories, go ahead and click that subscribe button below if you haven't already. And I'll talk to you next time. Take care. If you manage a team, you have to try Monday.com. Monday.com is a platform to track everything your team is working on. We use it for all our projects, marketing, product development, HR, creative productions. I love Monday.com because it's totally customizable and that's something I couldn't find in any other management tool. I can choose what information I want to track. Project owners, statuses, deadlines, which means more time for actual work. I tried managing everything we were doing with spreadsheets. It was a nightmare. Now we have a tool that's easy to use. It's given us the confidence to take on more complex projects. There's so much you can do. Filter through data, get breakdowns of information, and see highlights from across departments. It gives a sense of everything falling into place. Seriously, if you manage a team, you need to use Monday.com. All right, guys, let's discuss uh, the part one of the subject, information technology, where we have uh, two key terms to understand right now. One is information, the other one is technology. Right, so to basically go with the context of what is information, right, first and foremost thing we need to know is information. So guys, tell me generally, 
whenever you are talking about the term information what comes to your mind so you're talking about the word information you say i'm going to give you some information or i'm going to give you i'm, I'm going to get some information when we are using the word information what do we mean by information data. some kind of a data right okay that is something tell me what all comes to your mind we will discuss see there is no way how we need to by heart any definition we can always go with understanding what the concept is and then fundamentally going up and coining a definition you don't really have to make something you know uh, like by hearting or you know setting up things just ask a few questions get the answers join them that will make up a definition right so guys in that context what is information let's let throw your opinions and we will cover it so for somebody said it is data it is not definitely only data because then what is the difference between data and information both are same no so data is something else information is something else uh, what else what else comes to your mind message. it's some kind of a message some kind of an opinion some kind of a thought then process the data okay somebody says if date that means so process the data they saying so first of all you gave me this word data i asked you what is information you are giving me another you know word which i don't know the meaning of now see an answer to one question should not be another question correct uh, so you give me the answer for this also no i asked you a question you should give me answer not one more question but what you are giving me is another question so i don't know what is data so tell me what is data now you said data what is data so guys basically if you look at what is information the first question that we have asked is what so you told me data somebody told me message somebody told me process data right and then somebody is telling me it could be any thing useful all those is fine but what ideally is data anything in this world you know is modeled in the form of data only anything is modeled in the form of data all the real world objects are modeled in the form of data which means what which means data is a mere collection of data is mere collection of some kind of a facts let me throw an example to make this concept a little more clear right for example you know when you're walking you saw a banner which reads like class start on the 25th right you saw a banner like this where it was saying that classes start on 25th you saw something and this is absolutely ridiculous to understand but is it a fact that classes are starting somewhere yeah it's a fact class is starting where which class now a medical student is walking and he saw this array some classes starting an engineering student saw this a ca student saw this all these people saw this board but nobody could make anything out of it so they just saw and walk past it why because it didn't make relevance to anybody class is starting are be very clear which class so i don't know and since that is something that is not clear or it's very vague here we really don't know what class is going on now same set of people are walking on the road but they saw this banner right now where ca classes start on 25th now the medical student who walk past the engineering student who walk past they'll simply walk past it they won't give any second thought to it why because is it giving greater clarity than the first example or not yeah so with a little more information we are able to understand i mean with a little more clarity we are able to understand so guys is this board useful to somebody now is this board useful to somebody who is that somebody a ca student correct now please understand as we add more and more clarity now guys he saw this board in february so ideally what will he think 25th is feb 25th that's what he thinks it could be march 25th also so it's lacking more clarity now wait it's, it's not done there ca class is starting on 25th one cpd student saw this and he's like hey some class is starting then he's like you don't know that it's cpt or ipcc or final then they walk past it again so those ca students stopped and saw this 
he is not really going to the next step. Why? Because of lack of clarity. So now what they did is to do something like this. Now who are the students who will stop at this board? The exactly IPC students only will stop. Why? Because they know that CPT students will walk with. IPC are studying, Chalo, not for us. Finance students will say, Are IPC again not for us. So those two people are going off. Understood? They are not there. So only IPCC candidates will start. But they are also a problem. They are also not done yet. Sir, I already finished my group 1. See, IPCC class means which one? Group 1 or group 2. Huh? We don't know anything. So here, see IPCC group 2 classes. A little more clarity on the board. Then there is like, Sir, fantastic. I want group 2 only. See, IPCC group 2 classes starting on the 25th. Sir, they didn't tell where. What class? Advanced account, the odd aid, IT or SM, I had no clarity, sir. Are so much is there, there is still no clarity. That means the deeper you go, the greater you can, you know, get information. But this is not information as yet, it's still some fact. Somewhere some group two class is starting. So all these mere collection of facts are what? Data. But when you add something to it which makes it more meaningful, what will it become? It becomes information. So guys, from data which is a mere collection of facts, if I am processing it, if I am what? Processing it, then the activity is called data processing, which makes information. But guys, tell me one thing, CA group 2 class start on, let me add up, 25th. Well, now somebody seeing this will be impressed by the board and they understand. Of course, here, call. Some number is given. Is that enough for somebody to at least do their next move? Because after calling I can find out, hey, where is your institute? Where is it? Who is taking the class? You didn't give any faculty details. You didn't give subject details. You didn't give any timings. Oh, they will tell you everything on the phone. Have you seen that board saying, for more info, for more information, dial. We have seen so many boards which say for more information dial. Which means what? Which means that you are giving something. That this means this is not the info then. This is only telling you some facts. If you want to know more about this fact, you call me. On call I will tell you. So guys, mere collection of facts doesn't make up to information. Then what makes up to information is what? Processed form of now tell me one more thing. Do you believe this board is processed? Like do you believe that this board is very good? Yes, it's much better than the past, right? Hello, from the first board that I wrote, this is much better or not? Yes. yes. But, medical student went past this board again. Does it make sense to him? Are you only told me now that this is much better than past. But it should help medical student, no? It won't help. Why? Because right from the beginning, it is not relevant to him. Are you understanding? Data, what was given there, is meaningless in the initial. The first board that I wrote, class taught on, that was meaningless to everybody, correct? Then we added all these. We glorified the board. Does it make some sense to somebody now? But does it make sense to a medical student and engineering student? Not even now. That means, is this data or information? Is it data or information? Why is the dilemma there in your answer? Why are you not able to tell whether it is data or information? Because you don't know who is reading the board. Yes or no? So guys, if the CA student who is doing IPCC is reading the board, is this information or not? Yes. Anybody else reading this board, for them it is? That means the same thing which is data for somebody. Can it be information to somebody else? Absolutely. Can it be like that or not? That is the best part of the story. So, who decides what is information and who decides what is data? The user. The user. That is the recipient. So, I am now going to introduce a key character in this definition who is going to decide what is information and what is data. So, right, I already asked the question of what. What is information? Information is a processed form of data. So, guys, information. I am asking my first question. What is information? What is information? Processed form of 
प्रोसेस्ड फॉर्म ऑफ डेटा ओके वेरी गुड बट दिस इज प्रोसेस फॉर्म ऑफ डेटा बट दिस इज स्टिल मीनिंगलेस टू सो मेनी पीपल राइट सो की कैरेक्टर इज इंट्रोड्यूस इन डेफिनेशन हु इज दैट द गाई हु इज रिसीविंग इट कॉल द रिसिपियंट ओके यूजर वी विल कॉल हिम यूजर लेटर राइट नाउ वी विल कॉल हिम रिसिपियंट बिकॉज इट वुड बी एनी बडी राइट सो गाइज information is a process form of data which is meaningful to whom guys meaningful to who is that character meaningful to the recipient i realized that the words you hear shape you but the most important word you will ever hear in your entire life are the words you say to yourself which is meaningful to the recipient so this guy is the most important guy in the definition chalo that is a very simple point what is information process form of data to whom it is important to the recipient but that's not it what is more important is how does it matter to somebody chalo now the recipient received the process form of data guys an ipc student read this board what does he do after that only two options what are the two probable options either he will join the class or not join the class yes or no so that means he will take a decision or not guys why is the information meaningful to him so that he can make a decision right process form of data which is meaningful to the recipient for what purpose so i am asking next question why for decision making for decision making guys is he making on the spot decision or 25th is a future date no don't be bother about today's date so somebody could read this board on 10th somebody can read this board on 25th morning also so are they making a decision right now or are they making a decision for future could be anything yes or no if i'm reading it on february 10th it's a decision for me whether to join the class on 25th or not that is one decision If I am reading the decision, I mean uh, board on 25th morning, it is an immediate decision. Should I join the class today or not? Today? So guys, by using this meaningful information, can I make decisions? Yes. When? That is the last question. When? Either now, now or in future. So guys, we are just facing four questions: what, who, why, and when. so come on everybody together let me tell me now what is data data is only a mere collection of facts but when it comes to information what is the information information is a process form of data it is meaningful to the recipient acha for what purpose for decision making when now or in future now is called current current means what right now future is called progressive progressive means as we move on as we go on, right chalo put up two important things that we learned right now let's put it up so before the first chapter starts you have a little blank space you can use that blank space to write down couple of important definitions put up the first side reading guys call it data data first definition that we are writing is data what is data guys it's a random collection of data is a random collection of make you note here data is a random collection of facts and figures data is a random collection of facts and figures that's a first and very simple definition but that's not what we need that's only raw we need to process that we need to make it more glorified we need to use it for decision making and all that so that makes a lot of sense put up the next side heading called information and when you write the definition also write it in four parts so that it's very easy for you to understand i'll tell you what the four parts are you can go with it right this is just an explanation of it we will write it now ah uh, put up the side heading information what will you write with the first line is what information is processed form of data all in first line information is process form of data that is line 1 process form of data that is line 1 which is meaningful to the recipient line number 
which is meaningful to the recipient which is meaningful to the recipient for for in the third point right on for current or progressive decision making right current or progressive in the third line write the word decision making in the fourth process form of data which is meaningful to the recipient for current or progressive decision making I'm just reordering that to make a very meaningful statement what is that we are doing process form of data which is meaningful to the recipient i just moved this for current or progressive decision making for current or progressive decision making that is third and point number four why decision making so guys these are the four basic points that we need to understand now when we join all these that's what makes the definition of what information is hello everybody tell me along what is it information is process form of data meaningful to the recipient okay for what for current or progressive decision understood guys that's exactly what information is all about so we need understood data we understood information okay all together different from this is the term technology right which is what we are so much addicted to right technology so technology has changed technology has brought in so much thanks to technology we are telling so many things all that i wanted to tell now is what do you know about this particular term called technology come on tell me what is your insight or an idea about this word technology so we have now seen data and information we have seen now we are going to see this word called technology so tell me what do you mean by technology you are all using phones you are all using computers phones right everything has become very much mobile things have become very easy so what what do you mean by technology tell me that technology now this is a come on quick we got to just move on we are not spending so much time on this come on fast what do you mean by technology anything what is technology except for instance we had uh, you know wooden wheels wooden wheels were there right you know we, we all studied the early man story on you know how he used to make fire out of you know stones and then you know like wooden wheels we have seen how man has you know found out wooden wheels and then the you know the evolution theory from there on we went on now we use you know like the railways uses wheels of iron right like the roadways are using rubber wheels right so we have found out different thing no oh, you can't kind of imagine to use rubber on uh, you know the electric uh, i mean uh, in the same the same trains the trains are running on electric mode so now we don't even have uh, wheels we have connected magnetic platforms so they like you have speed trains and all that with no wheels they're all moving on a small you know magnetic path so they're, they're very much different so now how things have changed evolved that means what they made things better and what i was talking is about a wooden wheel and right now i'm talking about the same thing without even the wheels so there is an evolution in everything right you used to take clothes and you know rinse them well heat them hard to a stove and then get them washed right that was one process of washing right now all that you need to do is to throw it into a machine shut the door connect it to a water pipe switch on done it's washed rinsed dried and then you get the you know dry cloth out fully automatic washing machine so what did a washing machine do here what did a car do what did a bike do what did a pen do right if you go back centuries right we have all seen those transcripts that people have written have you seen stone engravings but they didn't have this pen now right now it's become an easy platform for me i'm using this pen so that i can communicate whatever i want i'm using this board that time they neither had a board nor a pen nor they had a paper nor they had your uh, okay this is a marker for me you have a pen so you are writing something so what we leave for our future is what something they have left from their side are all on stone engravings today they are all there in museums right or otherwise you know they they found some dry leaves on which they have crushed green leaves made some you know kind of a liquid out of that and then they use that to write something that is their kind of putting up things or you know like some king had very serious things to write and he found nothing 
so then they use their blood to write you know, today they are all in the museum so that point of time they didn't find today we have ink to write that time they couldn't think of making one so they use their own blood but today also we use that's a different thing different people use it for different purposes ha huh. so nevertheless right but anyways either way so today this is not considered to be ink today this is considered to be you know little out of the box right ha huh. for whatever reason they are but guys from all these what we need to understand is what something that has made the life more easier something that has helped us to push it to the next level which is what is called what a technology anything that makes our life easier is technology right we used to you know like household you talk about a household like washing utensils washing clothes cleaning the house sweeping the house mopping the house you name it and we have something a device which is meant for that right i am telling you as simple as writing like say 11th century carvings you go and you know you are very surprised in the museum to see all that maybe you know like a two centuries later whatever we have written in the notebooks that also could be you know uh, maybe two centuries later there will be nothing like a notebook to write everything may be printed two generations later what we leave could the be the entire data that is stored on cloud today itself we are not storing anything in books and papers anymore those days of big big store rooms big libraries when was the last time you went to a library to pick up a book everything is available on e platform you have tools like kindle to read you know like so there's no real reason to store anything any more in physical form so already we are in the process of saving environment no more cutting down of trees and no more wasting of paper so right it has its own benefits like say when you talk about a concept like information technology what is the technology that you talking about i right now i'm not even talking about information technology i'm blind to this word information right now i'm just talking about technology so anything that eases our life anything that makes things or jobs easier but how this is the concept but very important question is still pending how do you do that pen is it a small tool right right now the marker that i'm having is it a tool some time back i told you washing what is it called as washing machine so it could be a tool or it could be a machine or it could be any mechanism the use of various tools the use of some techniques the use of some machines use of all this which is making your job easy that's what technology is all about what is technology the use of tools techniques and machines to make life more easier i mean it need not be coined as make life more easier you can say to make anything more easier that's what is technology all right first put up the definition of technology then now i want all of you to use all your intelligence to join both this and figure out what exactly information technology would be we will do that in a short while as we write on the definition of technology put up the third side heading technology and write on the definition for what technology what is technology guys the use of technology is the use of machines slash tools slash techniques machines tools or techniques to perform jobs to perform jobs to perform jobs with more ease with more ease it is the tools machines and techniques to perform jobs with more ease then it is called what technology if you are using any tools machines and techniques to perform those jobs with more ease sir is it making it my life more easier yeah absolutely then it is a tool sir this particular tool is helping me erase it's making my life easier very good otherwise i might as, as well have to use a cloth i have a you know marker to write or if not this day should i find something else maybe earlier we used a blackboard and a white chalk now we are using a white board and a black ink it differs you know like things change earlier i was using a bicycle then we started adding a small motor to it so that where the you know the pedaling becomes a little more faster then we found out something like a moped without any gear or any any system then they found the gear system so that it could be shifted and become more faster and then we found four wheelers with much bigger engines then we found big trucks big buses right then we found the helicopters and the airplanes and technology like you know making it things more easier 
and with the current trends you can also say making it more faster right there is already a bike in existence you are bringing a faster bike there is already a car you are finding out some new mechanism to go even more faster there is already a plane you are finding one more plane to make it even more faster that means technology is not just about using tools and machine now the improvements in technology are about finding new devices or things which can make it even more faster so it's like if you are saying or making the statement because sir technology is changing technology is not changing technology is something that is dynamic technology the feature of technology is not to change it is an inherent component of technology technology by nature itself is not stable you understood what way of communication was in the past when it comes to talk about information earlier if i have to send information what do i do to send information I remember those days where you have seen those old movies where pigeons were sent right uh, that may or may not go to the right destination correct or not if it find somebody in between right and believes them to be the destination right so there is a possibility that something like that can happen but you know yeah but they were trained so you know that's that's not something that's uh, you know discussed now it's there from centuries pigeons basically are trained like that to go to the right destination and come back to its you know the owner so that they are trained like that that's fine that's one way of doing it then we started sending messengers right that is people physically carrying out uh, the message with themselves not on any paper or any note or anything then we started sending them you know through a uh, person but through a paper to some distance then we started using postal systems today we have the ultimate and the most easiest way of sending information through an instant messaging application or an email business purpose we use email and for personal communication we are using instant messaging applications like the whatsapp or hike or so many messengers you name it there are their instant messaging apps so from where from tying the message to a pigeon's leg to you know sending it across the globe in less than a second to instant messaging technology has evolved so that's what technology is all about but right now all that i'm asking is not this anymore right okay let this be there because that is what technology is all about we also have the definition of information all that i want to do is take a minute's time and coin a definition for what do you think is information technology so let me help you a little bit with that how does information come guys if i want information as the output what should be the input guys what should be the input data, data very good so if data is given as input the transformation of that will bring out information okay i'm not revealing anything more i want a definition for information technology take a minute's time i want you to phrase it out like what is being done by what to get what i think i've given you the answer in that itself right so come on use the concept of how we got out information use the concept of machines tools and techniques and then just we have a solution in that itself yeah can you make one definition what is it come on yeah, whatever whoever it is come on just go with the definition okay it may be right or wrong anyway we are going to write the definition in a minute chalo chalo tell me what is it what do you think information technology is all about so what is the output Okay, let's do it like this. Let's let's make it Q and A. So let's make it easy. What is the output that we want? Information. information. Very good. How do you get it? By processing something. What is that something? Data. Data. How should that processing be done? We don't know that. Either it can be manual, or by use of these machines and tools. Correct or not? So if you are using any of these tools, techniques, or machines to process data. and get out information that's all that is information technology right so if i have to coin it now like this so if i say the use of tools techniques or some machines to transform data into information is called as information technology is that true what is it what did i say come on everybody how do we go with it the use of tools techniques or machines for what for converting or transforming data into so if you are doing any of that then it is called what information technology guys please tell me in today's practical world 
what is that device or what is that machine that is helping us convert data into information computers, computers. very good that is exactly why it is so synonymous to the use of the word computer so sometimes we can go one step further and tell it is all about it is all about use of computers it is all about the use of computers how you are going to use computers in various genres of business in various areas of business to deal various aspects of business let me throw a very quick example like say 10 years before right the banking system was not like how it is today correct do you accept the fact or not we used to stand in long queues to deposit money to withdraw money in fact to update passbook also we have to stand in lengthy queues today there is no concept of passbook only why because by the time you pick up your cash from the counter and turn back your mobile phone is already ringing saying that your account is debited by so and someone same way somebody deposited cash in your account or some online credit has happened to your account directly you are getting messages and imagine if you have to always go only to one branch to withdraw deposit cash how difficult it is to be like say earlier i used to stay in area particular area a from there i shifted to area b now i opened a bank account in area a's branch i moved to area b which is almost 15 kilometers if you have to always go to area a's branch to withdraw a deposit cash imagine what kind of a pain it is today i don't even know where my branch is i don't even have to and i don't know to be very honest when was the last time i visited my home branch not required the internet application is there so i can use my banking account on the laptop forget about even opening the laptop we have the application right away on our mobile phone so we have come long from where we were so today's banking system is absolutely different from what we have seen thanks to technology banking is only one area of you know uh, idea that i given you education has changed right you don't have to always go to a particular place to listen to somebody right we have online classes right we have different mediums to reach people we have webinars right on the web a seminar is conducted right and then a live q and a session is possible the person is somewhere in delhi he is addressing whole of the country and we are all able to live chat and live talk with them you know have it make it a real time environment quite possible so those you know those are not out of imagination they pretty much what are happening right now thanks to the use of computers so it is very synonymous to the use of what computers right don't worry at a later point in time we will have the definition of what it is and what are the various concepts involved in it it is all about use of computers computers are nothing but a combination of hardware and software so lot more stuff is there to catch up don't worry the second chapter of the syllabus is full of that stuff only all right right now let me quickly take you through what we are going to see in it as a chartered accountant or basically right now as a chartered accountant student why are you being trained on it what is this punishment right the very fact that we chose commerce is because we don't like all this nonsense right yeah i can understand because we don't like physics we don't like chemistry we don't like real time things we only like concepts right that's one of the reasons why we chose commerce huh. so because we are not having the attachment towards it but the very fact that you need to understand at this point of time in the market what drives the entire concept is the information technology if today there is some client of yours not using it i i don't even really think that we can even imagine a client who is not using it right so in fact tomorrow if you have to file your exam application you have to know it a little bit of how to use computers so today you can't be an alien to these concepts and say sorry it's not my domain i am not really connected to it we can't definitely say that right so in that context we definitely need to understand how things work right so see here on what information technology is all about and how we are actually trying to figure out what it is we have five chapters in our syllabus to understand what is going on so again guys we are not discussing on how we are going to use information technology in your life or in my life what we are going to do with information technology is again going to be restricted only to a business
So both these subjects, guys, like in strategic management and information technology, we are only talking about these two subjects in the context of a business, not for you or me. We are not dealing strategic management for you or me. It's not our personal management. I'm not talking about time management or I'm not talking about your health and wealth management. I'm talking about strategic management. Strategies are required by business. So that was business management. Same case here also. How IT plays a key role in shaping up business? Right. This subject also starts with the same definition of what a business is. Right. How it goes further. What are various processes that you need to get into? How do you go with it? This subject has only five chapters. Again, like I said, 50, 57 marks. 50 marks is what you're supposed to uh, write for. 57 marks or 58 marks could be something including choice. So please be very sure that there are going to be questions from all the chapters. So there's nothing that you can leave in choice. Right, because limited syllabus and one good thing about a subject like IT SMS, your questions including audit also, your questions are always, you know, from the book, except probably for example, if you practice 100 problems in costing, maybe a 101th problem with a new adjustment can come in the exam, which you have not really practiced. But here it's a straight question and if you know what the answer is, you score marks, otherwise it's straight and simple, right? Of course, we will, you know, towards the end see what to write and how to write and how to prepare. That's a different story. Right now, we will only concentrate on understanding the syllabus first. Right? So, we are not struggling here to get 40 marks. That's not our objective. So, we have raised our bars already. Right? Our minimum lookout for anything in the subject should be at what? 60 marks. That is minimum lookout. Then, depending on your effort, you scale up. You want 80, you want 90. You want 70, you decide. But I want a minimum of 60. Because you are putting time and effort, this is the minimum reflection of that time and effort that we should see. And it's, let me tell you guys, it's not very difficult in this kind of an IT subject, IT and SM subject because one good thing about, I mean, sometimes it proves to be an advantage, sometimes the same thing comes to be a disadvantage also. Like, you have 50 marks of IT, 50 marks of SM. So all that you need to do is to strike 30 and 30. But some students, you know, like they're over attached to one part of this. You don't do that. Because you want to do studying management very well, ignore IT. Some students are like, they're very good in IT, ignore studying management. That should not be there. A proper balance should be there. And uh, our own students have proved that it is possible to get something like 85. Right? So these numbers are not something that I'm telling to you, know, just for the sake of telling. These are numbers which are possible and they're proven track records of these. So don't even really worry that, you know, how could it be something like 85. It's pretty much possible. And my own students have done that. And in fact, there are students across, you know, the formats where they have scored 90 plus also. But, you know. So it's quite possible to score very high. It's only the game that you need to play very balanced. So in that context, to discuss IT, we have business as the main thing. In business, you will have several processes. So what are those processes? How do you manage those? So, the first and foremost chapter that we will be discussing is about what is business process management, right? Then, uh, second chapter that we are supposed to deal with is about what is the concept of IT. In the last five minutes, I just gave you a small intro about what IT is. It's this complete discussion about the topic in that chapter. What is IT and what are all IT fundamentals, some basic concepts. So, what is information technology? What are the various components in information technology? What are its various layers? How is it useful? What are some of the latest tools and technologies? Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, right? We have used iPads, iPods, and then we have used uh, tablets. We have used laptops. We have used operating systems like Android. So, quick, quick insight about all those topics. Very important two marks topics. When we get there, we will see. And then one of the most important chapters in your syllabus which is also a heavyweight chapter like where you can expect roughly around 12 marks to 14 marks to feature. Of course, all chapters have an equal weightage between 8 to 12 marks, but a little, you know, more towards chapter 3 and 4. Chapter 3 is on how to connect the entire world. It's about networks and telecommunication. Networks and telecommunication. What is telecommunication? How did it make our life easy? What are networks? How is the entire world networked, right? One global village is the concept that's, you know, being talked about today. How is it possible? What are these networks? How did we go for it? How did we use internet? How e-commerce as a concept was born? Today we are not even visiting big, big shopping malls to do anything. It's online shopping time. 
right you want it you just have it in your uh, you know mobile phone the application just pull it and just buy whatever you want so the days of change guys so you need to know how networks and telecommunication work and this is pretty much a very general topic very easy of course few technical concepts are there in both these topics and then topic number 4 is absolutely business oriented how information systems which are various softwares like i was just talking about a banking thing a banking company right now uses a core banking software a core banking software is something that enables you to withdraw a deposit anywhere in any branch core right central operations one single software for everything of course we'll discuss that in detail so how various information systems are used in business there all the topics in the fourth chapter lot more to catch up with there and then fifth one is what are the latest softwares available in the market what are those business application softwares business application software that are available in market you name an activity we have a software for that in the market right now right sir i want to track my vehicle very good logistic tracking system you have a gps chip enabled in the vehicle right now you can track sir i want accounting automation you have softwares like tally tally is one very popular accounting software or no tally focus wings so i want to automate a toll gate very good walk to the toll gate tap a card gate opens take your car move forward right toll gate automated toll gate systems you name an area and we have a software to take care of that right it's as simple as you know playing a game of golf right golf is a game which is played in acres of space you want to track the ball and then move on from one part of the court to the other part systems right there's a small chip enabled in the ball that's made right that tracks the position of the ball and then you can move right you name it and that sector has softwares right now right so these are five uh, very simple chapters that we have right and of course business process management also talks a little bit about flow charts that's one of the technique in that topic i have uh, pulled it down into a separate unit flow chart some problems are there in flow charts on how to draw flow charts that is discussed the concept is discussed in chapter 1 but drawing of flow charts i have given exclusive questions in topic number 6 so that's it this is your syllabus and this is what it is going to be for all the 50 marks understood so these are the five topics of course flow chart you can include in the first topic itself so these are the topics that you are going to see on how it is going to help in business and what are the various things that it has brought us on the you know current situation So let's start off with our first chapter, guys, which is called as business process management. Are you clear with all the definitions? Please run through all the definitions once again of data, information, technology, and of course understand information technology also. We will start with our first chapter called business process management. There's a pattern to genius. There's a method behind the magic. I always tell people my inspiration was my desperation and I don't do this to impress you I do this to express to you what's possible because the truth is you could do this too and it's really about supercharging your brain so you can learn anything faster and that's really my mission growing up as a child I had a traumatic brain injury that left me with certain learning difficulties and challenges I had poor focus or memory I couldn't concentrate it took me an extra few years just to learn how to read what I found was that over time I came up with these techniques and these methods to be able to compensate for these challenges I went from below normal to above normal If you've ever seen me on stage and I'll memorize a room full of people's names, 100 word, 100 numbers forwards and backwards, I really focus on the science of meta learning, learning how to learn. I think if there's one skill to master in the 21st century, it's our ability to quickly learn and apply and think and adapt faster than our environment. And that's really been my focus for the past 3 decades. real field research what works with individuals what's the patterns of genius whether it's a child with learning difficulties to seniors that feel like they're losing their memory and working with high performers in hollywood and c suite executives founders athletes i see a pattern there's a pattern to genius there's a method behind the magic 
I've created a master class where I reveal the 10 keys for unlocking your super brain. So you could supercharge your mind, you could learn anything faster, you could focus and get more done. It's all in this master class. Okay. Baik, sekarang kita lihat satu persatu proses perniagaan Iaitu yang pertama input Apakah input? Input adalah faktor-faktor pengeluaran yang terdiri daripada tanah, modal, buruh, keseluaran, teknologi terkini Dan mesin yang digunakan untuk menghasilkan sesuatu produk Okey, baik. Contoh kita lihat iaitu pengeluaran tekstil. Iaitu pengilang memerlukan kapas. Kapas adalah bahan mentah untuk diproses. Manakala manusia adalah buruh atau pekerja yang menyelenggarakan mesin-mesin. Wang. Wang adalah modal untuk membeli bahan mentah. Dan mesin untuk membeli bahan mentah, mesin dan juga membayar upah kepada pekerja. Serta kemahiran iaitu keesuanan untuk menghargikan sumber-sumber berkenaan. Baik, proses penyagaan yang kedua adalah proses transformasi ataupun tambah nilai. Proses ini adalah proses untuk menukar input. Dari segi bentuk, rupa, warna, rasa dan saiz kepada sesuatu bentuk yang boleh dikenali sebagai output. Dalam proses ini, dia akan memberi tambah nilai kepada barang yang telah diproses. Baik, contoh adalah penghasilan tekstil setelah bahan mentah, tenaga kerja, mesin dan peralatan dikumpulkan serta bahan mentah akan diproses atau ditukarkan menjadi kain menggunakan kepakaran pekerja dan teknologi yang tertentu. Okay, baik. Selanjutnya proses pengorek yang ketiga adalah proses output iaitu hasil yang telah diperolehi dari proses transformasi ha? daripada input kita proses dan kita dan jadikan output. Okey. Output mempunyai ciri-ciri tertentu yang dapat memenuhi keperluan dan kehendak pengguna. Okay. So, kualiti output perlu perlu memenuhi piawaian yang telah ditetapkan. Okey, baik. Contoh dalam pengeluaran tekstil Output yang dihasilkan mungkin mungkin kain kapas ataupun kain sutra atau polister yang dapat menempati piawaian tertentu yang telah ditentukan oleh pihak-pihak tertentu. Okay, baik, seterusnya proses yang ketiga adalah proses jualan. Jualan adalah merupakan aktiviti menukarkan hasil pengeluaran output kepada pembeli untuk tujuan mendapatkan keuntungan dan memberi kepuasan. Baik, kita lihat contoh. Dalam pengeluaran tekstil, kain sutra yang dihasilkan perlulah dipasarkan kepada pengguna iaitu Uh, mestilah kepada pengguna sasaran uh, supaya harga yang ditawarkan adalah bersesuaian dengan pengguna dan kos pengeluaran yang digunakan okay. baiklah seterusnya proses yang terakhir adalah untung 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 adalah Lebihan hasil terhadap kos Manakala rugi adalah kos lebih ter daripada hasil eh? okay. 
So, untung yang akan diperolehi apabila hasil perniagaan melebihi kos perniagaan. Manakala rugi adalah sebaliknya. Okay. Hasil tolak kos dapat untung. Kalau hasil tolak kos rendah adalah rugi. Eh? Baik. Keuntungan yang diperolehi biasanya akan digunakan semula oleh perniagaan dalam aktiviti pengeluaran seterusnya. Atau dapat menambah aset-aset perniagaan. Okay. Okay, contoh, uh, keuntungan daripada jualan tekstil yang telah dihasilkan boleh digunakan untuk pengeluaran untuk menambahkan bilangan mesin yang tertentu ataupun mesin-mesin yang bersesuaian. Yeah. Okey, baik. Okey. Baik. Eh uh, sub topik yang ketiga ialah objektif untung. Okey. Siapa meniaga yang tidak mau untung? Semua orang meniaga mau untung ya. Eh? Okey, apakah keuntungan? Keuntungan merupakan lebihan hasil setelah ditolak semua kos aktiviti perniagaan. Uh, adalah menjadi matlamat utama perniagaan ya, untuk memperoleh keuntungan supaya perniagaan boleh terus wujud dan terus berkembang dalam pasaran. Contoh, eh, kita nak jual sesuatu produk dengan harga jualan sebanyak RM20 seunit. Manakala kos adalah RM15. So, Uh, untung bagi setiap unit adalah sebanyak RM5 iaitu RM20 harga jualan tolak dengan RM15 kita dapat untung RM5. Yeah. So RM5 uh, ini merupakan salah satu sumber modal yang akan digunakan untuk mengembangkan perniagaan. Uh, Ianya boleh digunakan untuk membeli aset-aset dan keperluan-keperluan perniagaan lain. Yeah. Okay. Baik, uh, untuk meraih keuntungan yang besar, eh, kalau kita dapat untung yang besar, akan memberi satu gambaran bahawa perniagaan telah berjaya diurus dengan baik. Yeah. Okay. Keuntungan yang besar juga membolehkan perniagaan memberikan ganjaran yang tinggi kepada peniaga dan usahawan. Kemampuan perniagaan mencapai keuntungan akan menyakinkan pelabur-pelabur luar untuk melabur dalam perniagaan berkenaan. So, apabila perniagaan telah dapat atau memperoleh keuntungan ini, dia akan membuka ruang yang luas untuk melaksanakan tanggungjawab sosial dan boleh mewujudkan satu persepsi masyarakat terhadap perniagaan itu. Okey, baik. Seterusnya kita akan lihat iaitu tajuk yang kedua iaitu 1.2 kepentingan perniagaan. Okey, kepentingan perniagaan ni ada empat. Eh? Empat. Yang pertama, memenuhi keperluan masyarakat. Yang kedua, meningkatkan peluang pekerjaan. Yang ketiga, meningkatkan pembangunan ekonomi dan negara. Dan yang keempat, memenuhi kehendak peluang global. Baik, kita mari kita lihat satu persatu tentang kepentingan perniagaan ini. Apa itu, apa dia yang dikatakan memenuhi keperluan masyarakat ini? Eh? Okay. Keperluan memenuhi keperluan masyarakat ialah penyagaan itu cuba memenuhi keperluan dan kehendak masyarakat eh, atau pelanggan 
dengan menyediakan berbagai atau pelbagai barangan dan perkhidmatan yang bermutu dari segi harga, masa dan tempat yang sesuai kepada semua pelanggan. Yang keduanya, penyagaan dapat membantu menyediakan keperluan asas masyarakat seperti barangan, makanan, pakaian dan barangan kesihatan serta perkhidmatan seperti pengangkutan dan perubatan. Kita memerlukan perubatan. Yang kedua, kepentingan perniagaan ialah dapat meningkatkan peluang perniagaan. Perniagaan ni dia mewujudkan peluang-peluang pekerjaan kepada masyarakat yang mempunyai keperbagaian latar belakang pendidikan. Tak kira lah ada sekolah rendah, sekolah menengah, masuk universiti dan lain-lain. Okay, so, berbagai kemahiran dan pengetahuan diperlukan dalam sesebuah penyagaan. Dengan menyediakan pekerjaan, penyagaan-penyagaan ini dapat meningkatkan cara hidup masyarakat melalui pendapatan yang mereka terima. Okay. Seterusnya, kepentingan penyagaan ialah dapat meningkatkan pembangunan ekonomi dan negara. Iaitu penyagaan dapat meningkatkan pertumbuhan ekonomi negara dengan melalui dengan aktiviti ekspor iaitu akan menambah pendapatan negara. Kita ekspor barang ke luar negara, kita dapat pendapatan, dapat duit. Okey. Uh, aktiviti penyagaan juga membolehkan pembangunan infrastruktur yang lebih baik. Uh, di sesebuah tempat. Uh, so, secara tak langsung akan memberi manfaat kepada masyarakat. Uh, ada ke, ada penyagaannya, infrastruktur akan dibina. Seterusnya, kepentingan yang keempat adalah memenuhi kehendak dan peluang global. Iaitu penyagaan tidak hanya terhad di dalam sesebuah negara saja. Tetapi meliputi keluar negara iaitu borderless world. Eh? Setiap negara berpeluang menikmati pelbagai produk dari pelbagai negara. Dapat bertukar-tukar produk dan barangan. So, dan juga ilmu penyagaan perlu dipertekatkan supaya mampu bersaing dengan syarikat-syarikat antara bangsa eh, yang membuka penyagaan di sesuatu negara. Contohnya, uh, terdapat syarikat-syarikat dari Amerika Syarikat, Jepun yang telah beroperasi di Malaysia bagi memenuhi kehendak global. So, setakat itu dulu kita uh, belajar dan kita Tengok penyagaan dan persetaraan. Okay, so, kita akan sambung pada next class. So, sekian terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera kepada para pelajar yang dikasihi sekalian. Alhamdulillah kehadrat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kita dapat bertemu lagi di sesi kuliah pada kali ini. Walaupun tidak secara bersemuka, saya mengharapkan para pendengar pelajar sekalian sentiasa berada dalam keadaan sehat walafiat dan diharap dapat memberi fokus dalam sesi kuliah kita pada kali ini. Sebelum saya lanjutkan sesi kuliah, sedikit saya akan sampaikan penerangan berkaitan perniagaan. Okay. Sebagai ahli perniagaan, Semestinya perkara yang sangat penting sebenarnya yang kita harus ketahui ialah apakah peranan atau fungsi perniagaan. Tidak kira kepada persekitaran maupun kepada perniagaan itu sendiri. Selain itu juga, kita juga perlu tahu atau mengambil tahu berkenaan persekitaran perniagaan yang mungkin boleh jadi 
satu cabaran, kekuatan, kelemahan, peluang atau ancaman kepada perniagaan yang dijalankan. Justeru, kuliah kita pada kali ini, kita akan belajar sedikit berkaitan dengan fungsi-fungsi perniagaan dan seterusnya persekitaran perniagaan. Di akhir kuliah nanti, diharap para pelajar mencapai objektif pembelajaran, iaitu yang pertama, dapat menjelaskan fungsi-fungsi perniagaan dan seterusnya dapat menjelaskan tanggungjawab perniagaan kepada pihak berkepentingan. Baiklah, mari kita tengok topik yang pertama okay, dalam pembelajaran kita pada hari ini ialah fungsi-fungsi perniagaan. Lazimnya, Fungsi perniagaan terdiri daripada empat yang utama iaitu yang pertama sekali adalah pengeluaran, pemasaran, yang ketiga keuangan dan seterusnya pengurusan sumber manusia. Jadi kesemua empat keseluruhan yang kita akan pelajari pada sesi kali ini. Mari kita tengok fungsi pengeluaran yang pertama iaitu Pengeluaran Fungsi pertama yang penting adalah pengeluaran okay, Iaitu di mana Kalau kita tengok maksud dia okay, Perniagaan menghasilkan satu produk Atau keluaran Melalui Suatu proses transformasi Sumber-sumber pengeluaran Ataupun input Kepada output Ataupun barang siap Atau barang separa siap Keluaran yang dihasilkan termasuklah dalam bentuk barangan ataupun perkhidmatan yang mana wujudnya nilai tambah sumber-sumber bahan mentah setelah menjadi output atau barang siap. Sebagai contohnya, okay, berdasarkan slide ini, kita tengok proses pengeluaran kasut. Para pelajar juga boleh ambil contoh lain seperti proses pengeluaran roti, proses pengeluaran kereta dan sebagainya. Okay, fungsi yang seterusnya okay, kita akan masuk okay, iaitu berkaitan pemasaran. Okay. Selain daripada pengeluaran tadi, pemasaran juga merupakan atau boleh dianggap sebagai nadi dalam perniagaan. Okay, ini kerana... Kecekapan dan keberkesanan pemasaran sangat mempengaruhi pembelian. Pemasaran yang berkesan menggalakkan pembelian daripada pengguna. Dan begitu juga sebaliknya. Pemasaran merupakan satu sistem aktiviti perniagaan yang dibentuk untuk merancang dan melaksanakan konsep produk, penentuan harga, promosi, dan pengedaran suatu produk Contohnya okay, Melaksanakan promosi jualan Peletakan harga dan pengedaran Kecekapan sebuah perniagaan dalam mengurus Promosi, harga dan pengedaran Mampu menggalakkan pembelian daripada pengguna Dan ini memberi kesan yang baik kepada per perniagaan Okay, seterusnya fungsi berikut adalah keuangan. Keuangan umumnya, okay, istilahkan apa sahaja aktiviti yang melibatkan pengurusan keuangan. Tidak kira individu, pertubuhan perniagaan atau bukan perniagaan, pertubuhan kerajaan atau bukan kerajaan. Ini bermaksud semua aktiviti berkaitan keuangan termasuklah penyediaan maklumat keuangan seperti penyata keuangan sehinggalah okey peniaga atau pengurus keuangan melakukan ramalan keperluan dana mencari sumber dana dan penggunaan dana sehingga memastikan dana tersebut digunakan secara cekap dan ber, berkesan okey sebagai contoh penyediaan laporan 
ataupun penyata kewangan. Okay. Begitu juga contoh lain seperti perancangan belanjawan perniagaan. Okay, seterusnya, okay, fungsi yang terakhir okay, adalah pengurusan sumber manusia. Okay. Sebelum kita lebih lanjut, okay, perlu kita tahu sumber manusia itu merupakan semua staf yang merangkumi pekerja dan pihak pengurusan dalam sebuah perniagaan. Justeru, pengurusan sumber manusia ini pula merupakan suatu program pembangunan dan pentadbiran sumber manusia untuk meningkatkan prestasi dan kualiti di samping memenuhi keperluan dan kepuasan mereka, iaitu sumber manusia tadi. Contohnya, okay, dalam pengurusan sumber manusia, okay, program yang jalankan seperti Okay, atau bermula dengan pengambilan pekerja baru, memberi latihan dan pembangunan, memberi ganjaran dan bonus, dan lain-lain lagi. Jadi kita telah okay, pelajari kesemua keempat-empat fungsi perniagaan itu tadi. Di mana fungsi-fungsi perniagaan itu tadi merupakan Perkara yang sangat penting untuk diketahui dan difahami oleh para pelajar sekalian. Okay. Seterusnya, kita tengok pula okay, topik yang kedua dalam sesi kuliah pada kali ini, iaitu persekitaran perniagaan. Persekitaran perniagaan seperti yang saya terangkan di awal kuliah tadi, ia boleh menjadi satu cabaran kepada peniaga, Kecekapan dan keberkesanan perniagaan sangat bergantung kepada kecekapan dan keberkesanan peniaga dalam menguruskan persekitaran perniagaan ini. Kerana terdapat persekitaran perniagaan yang memberi kesan secara langsung dan tidak langsung terhadap perniagaan. Lazimnya, persekitaran perniagaan terbahagi kepada dua, iaitu pihak berkepentingan, dan juga persekitaran umum. Okay, terdapat 8 pihak berkepentingan, iaitu masyarakat, pelabur atau pemodal, pembiaya, pekerja, pelanggan, pembekal, pesaing, dan akhir sekali adalah kerajaan. Manakala bagi persekitaran umum pula, okay, terdapat 6, iaitu ekonomi, teknologi, sosio budaya, politik dan undang-undang, global dan seterusnya adalah fizikal dan semula jadi. Namun untuk kuliah kali ini, saya mungkin akan menerangkan pihak berkepentingan sahaja. Manalah persekitaran umum akan diajar pada sesi kuliah akan datang. Baiklah, kita tengok persekitaran yang pertama iaitu persekitaran per persekitaran pihak berkepentingan. Okay, maaf. Okay. Uh, persekitaran yang pertama adalah pihak berkepentingan yang juga dahulunya dikenali sebagai persekitaran tu tugas. Okay. Dulu dikenali sebagai persekitaran tu tugas. Bagi peniaga Pihak berkepentingan perlu diberi perhatian serius kerana ia berkaitan langsung atau memberi kesan secara langsung kepada perniagaan. Ini bermaksud jika pihak berkepentingan ini tidak baik, maka memberi kesan tidak baik secara langsung kepada prestasi perniagaan. Dan begitulah juga sebaliknya. Okay, mari kita tengok. Okay. Pihak berkepentingan yang pertama adalah Masyarakat Masyarakat merupakan penduduk yang berpotensi okay, sebagai pelanggan yang disasarkan. Okay, untuk prestasi yang baik, peniaga perlu menjual barangan yang mematuhi budaya dan kepercayaan masyarakat di sekitarnya. 
memastikan tidak ada percanggahan dan memastikan masyarakat hidup selesa seperti melaksanakan tanggung sosial dan menyediakan kemudahan infrastruktur yang baik. Okey, seterusnya yang kedua adalah pelabur atau pe pemodal. Pelabur atau pemodal merupakan pemilik yang menyumbangkan modal dalam perniagaan okay. dengan matlamat mendapatkan pulangan dalam bentuk keuntungan atau dividen. Justeru, peniaga perlu menunjukkan prestasi keuangan perniagaan yang kukuh agar menarik minat pelabur dan memastikan mereka yakin dengan prestasi perniagaan. Mereka yang yakin besar kemungkinan akan mengekalkan pelaburan dan juga boleh menja boleh jadi menambah bilangan pelaburan. Keadaan ini sangat baik untuk perniagaan. Pihak seterusnya adalah pembiaya. Pembiaya merupakan pihak yang mengeluarkan dan membiayai modal sebuah perniagaan. Perniaga perlu juga memastikan kedudukan keuangan yang baik yang dapat memberi kepercayaan kepada pembiaya seperti bank untuk memberikan pembiayaan. Ini kerana pembiaya mendapatkan keuntungan daripada kadar faedah hasil pembiayaan yang di, diberikan. Okey, mari kita tengok pihak berkepentingan yang keempat iaitu pekerja. Okay. Pekerja merupakan individu yang menyumbangkan kemahiran untuk melaksanakan aktiviti perniagaan dan dibayar upah atau gaji sebagai ganjaran. Para pekerja bekerja berdasarkan kemahiran. Mereka dikelaskan dalam tiga kelompok iaitu mahir, separuh mahir dan pekerja tidak mahir. Pekerja yang berprestasi baik memberi kesan yang baik kepada perniagaan dan begitu juga sebaliknya jika pekerja kurang menunjukkan prestasi yang baik maka ia memberi kesan yang tidak baik kepada prestasi per perniagaan justeru bagi peniaga kebajikan para pekerja perlu dijaga dan prestasi mereka perlu sentiasa ditingkatkan seperti memberi kursus dan latihan seterusnya kita tengok ok pes Pihak berkepentingan yang kelima iaitu pelanggan. Siapa itu pelanggan? Pelanggan perlu diberi penekanan kerana mereka adalah atau merupakan individu yang membeli dan menggunakan produk yang dijual oleh peniaga. Cita rasa pelanggan perlu dipenuhi yang melibatkan aspek kualiti, harga dan konsep keluaran. Pelanggan sanggup membelanjakan sejumlah wang untuk membeli barangan yang dapat memenuhi cita rasa mereka. Tanpa pembelian daripada pelanggan, peniaga akan menghadapi masalah besar untuk memperoleh keuntungan dan seterusnya sukar untuk survive dalam pa pasaran. Ha, itu bagi pelanggan lah. Okey. Sebenarnya so, kita tengok pihak yang keenam iaitu pem pembekal. Pembekal merupakan pihak yang menawarkan segala keperluan sebuah perniagaan. Ha 
seperti bahan mentah, pekerja, dan juga pengangkutan. Karena peniaga sangat mengharapkan bahan mentah yang dibekalkan adalah pada tahap berkualiti. Ini kerana bahan mentah yang berkualiti sangat mempengaruhi kualiti barangan yang dikeluarkan nanti. Namun, peniaga perlu menjaga hubungan yang baik dengan pembekal dan mewujudkan kepercayaan yang tinggi dengan cara membayar semua pembelian secara kredit mengikut masa dan perjanjian yang dipersetujui. Setelah kita tengok, yang ketujuh adalah pesaing. Seperti yang semua ketahui, pesaing merupakan peniaga lain yang menjual atau mengeluarkan barangan sama atau hampir sama. Contohnya bagi pengusaha restoran, pesaingnya adalah pengusaha restoran yang lain di kawasan yang yang sama. Strategi dan perancangan dibuat kebanyakannya berdasarkan pesaing. Peniaga perlu sentiasa mengambil tahu situasi pesaing dan sentiasa membuat penambahbaikan seperti inovasi terhadap keluaran yang mampu agar mampu bersaing dengan baik. Walau apapun, persaingan perlulah uh, dibuat secara sehat dan tidak cuba merosakkan pesaing yang, la, yang lain bermaksud mewujudkan satu kompetitif yang se, sehat. Dan yang terakhir, tengok yang ke-8 ya adalah pihak ke kerajaan. Ya, mari tengok apakah tanggungjawab peniaga kepada pihak kerajaan. Peniaga seharusnya sentiasa mematuhi undang-undang yang digubal oleh kerajaan termasuklah membayar cukai dan yang paling penting tidak mengeluarkan atau menjual barangan yang diharamkan atau dilarang oleh kerajaan. Jika peniaga gagal mematuhi peraturan kerajaan maka Perniagaan berpotensi untuk menghadapi masalah. Begitu juga dalam memastikan pembaziran sumber tidak ber, berlaku. Ini bermakna sumber-sumber perlu digunakan secara optimal bagi mengelak pembaziran yang boleh merugikan perniagaan dan seterusnya negara. Oleh yang demikian, okay. kita telah melihat ke-88 pihak berkepentingan perniagaan iaitu masyarakat, pelabur, pemodal, pembiaya, pekerja, pelanggan, pesaing dan akhir sekali kerajaan. Kesemua pihak berkepentingan ini adalah memberi kesan secara langsung terhadap perniagaan. Tidak termasuk dari aspek prestasi dan sekaligus kelancaran perniagaan. Okey, sedikit rumusan di akhir kuliah kali ini. Okey, pada kali ini kita telah belajar dua topik penting, okey, yaitu pertama sekali fungsi perniagaan. Okay, di mana kita telah belajar berkaitan pengeluaran, pemasaran, keuangan dan pengurusan sumber manusia. Dan seterusnya, okay, di kuliah ini juga kita telah belajar berkaitan dengan persekitaran perniagaan yang lebih menjurus kepada pihak berkepentingan. Okay, pihak berkepentingan umumnya ada 8 iaitu masyarakat, pelabur atau pemodal, pembiaya, pekerja, pelanggan, 
pembekal, pesaing dan akhir sekali adalah ke kerajaan. Seteru saya mengharapkan okay, semua pelajar boleh mengingat dan memahami semua topik yang telah diterangkan tadi. Baiklah para pelajar sekalian, kita telah berada di pengakhiran kuliah untuk sesi kali ini. Sebelum itu, saya minta para pelajar untuk menyelesaikan latihan yang diberikan dalam slide nota ini dan perlu menghantar kepada pensyarah melalui Google Classroom sebagai penilaian pemahaman pelajar dan sebagai bukti kehadiran kuliah. Untuk sesi akan datang, pelajar diminta untuk bersedia bagi topik seterusnya iaitu satu lagi persekitaran perniagaan iaitu persekitaran umum dan juga bentuk-bentuk entiti perniagaan. Oleh yang demikian, selamat berjumpa lagi di sesi kuliah akan datang. Sekian, terima kasih. Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Hari ini kita akan belajar topik yang seterusnya, iaitu 1.4b Faktor-Faktor Persekitaran Umum. Objektif Pembelajaran Pelajar akan dapat menjelaskan faktor persekitaran umum dan juga menghuraikan pengaruh pihak berkepentingan dan persekitaran umum terhadap perniagaan. Sebelum ini, pelajar telah belajar pihak berkepentingan. Untuk topik kali ini, kita akan belajar tentang persekitaran umum, iaitu ekonomi, teknologi, sosio budaya, politik dan undang-undang, global serta fizikal dan semula jadi. Faktor persekitaran umum yang pertama ialah ekonomi. Ekonomi merujuk kepada situasi ekonomi dalam dan luar negara, sistem ekonomi, pasaran wang dan kadar faedah. Bagaimanakah ekonomi mempengaruhi perniagaan? Kestabilan ekonomi sesebuah negara akan menjamin perkembangan sesebuah perniagaan. Tetapi, jika berlaku kemelesetan ekonomi, perniagaan akan mengalami masalah kerana kuasa beli pengguna akan menurun. Sebagai contohnya, pandemik COVID-19 menyebabkan banyak perniagaan di Malaysia dan juga seluruh dunia terjejas dengan teruk, di mana sesetengah perniagaan terpaksa ditutup yang menyebabkan kerugian yang besar. Antara contoh lain adalah seperti kejatuhan nilai mata wang yang akan menyebabkan perniagaan terjejas. Seterusnya, teknologi. Teknologi merujuk kepada kaedah baharu untuk melakukan sesuatu kerja. Bagaimanakah teknologi memberi kesan kepada perniagaan? Perniagaan yang menggunakan teknologi terkini akan dapat meningkatkan produktiviti, menjimatkan masa pengeluaran, mengurangkan kos perniagaan. Oleh itu, sesebuah perniagaan perlu peka terhadap perkembangan teknologi terkini yang akan menjamin kemandirian dan juga keuntungan sesebuah perniagaan. Sebagai contoh, penggunaan teknologi 5G akan membantu usahawan-usahawan di Malaysia berdaya saing di peringkat antarabangsa. Faktor yang seterusnya adalah sosio budaya. Sosio budaya merujuk kepada kepercayaan agama, 
budaya, adat resam dan cita rasa penduduk sesebuah negara. Bagaimanakah sosio budaya mempengaruhi sebuah perniagaan? Perniagaan perlu menyesuaikan barangan dan perkhidmatan mengikut kehendak atau budaya masyarakat setempat. Perniagaan yang berupaya memahami sosio budaya sesebuah pasaran dengan baik akan berpeluang menguasai pasaran tersebut. Sebagai contoh, peniaga perlu peka dengan budaya dan norma penduduk setempat sebelum atau semasa menjalankan aktiviti perniagaan. Contohnya, mempamerkan logo-logo halal pada produk mereka dan tidak mengeluarkan produk yang bertentangan dengan kehendak atau norma penduduk setempat. Faktor yang seterusnya adalah politik dan undang-undang. Politik merujuk kepada keadaan sesebuah negara yang dipengaruhi fahaman pati politik pemerintah. Undang-undang pula merujuk kepada peraturan yang telah ditetapkan oleh pihak berkuasa terhadap perniagaan. Bagaimana politik dan undang-undang boleh mempengaruhi sebuah perniagaan? Kestabilan politik dapat menjamin kelancaran dan pertumbuhan aktiviti perniagaan. Manakala, dari aspek undang-undang pula, perniagaan yang menjalankan Perniagaannya mengikut perundangan yang sah akan membolehkan perniagaan tersebut terus maju dan diyakini oleh pelanggan. Contohnya, ketidakstabilan politik boleh menjejaskan aktiviti perniagaan seperti mogok dan juga rusuhan. Manakala, dari aspek undang-undang, perubahan dasar dan undang-undang perniagaan akan memberi kesan kepada perniagaan sama ada dari aspek positif ataupun negatif. Contohnya, kenaikan harga barang-barang kawalan akan menyebabkan kos pengeluaran produk meningkat. Manakala pemberian subsidi akan membantu perniagaan dari aspek positif. Faktor persekitaran yang seterusnya adalah global. Semua aktiviti perniagaan terdedah kepada dunia yang melangkaui sempadan sesebuah negara. Perniagaan perlu menghadapi cabaran di peringkat global yang merangkumi politik, undang-undang dan ekonomi dunia. Bagaimana global boleh memberi kesan pada perniagaan? Melalui perniagaan peringkat global, perniagaan berupaya mengembangkan potensi keuntungan pada kadar yang lebih tinggi. Contohnya, syarikat seperti Spritzer, Padini, Appleton dan Manchis mendapat keuntungan yang tinggi apabila menceburi perniagaan antarabangsa ataupun mendapat peluang global. Faktor persekitaran yang seterusnya adalah fizikal dan semula jadi. Fizikal merujuk kepada kemudahan infrastruktur di sesuatu tempat seperti jalan raya, pengangkutan, telekomunikasi dan lain-lain. Semula jadi pula merujuk kepada sumber semula jadi seperti bahan galian, hasil tanaman, air, udara dan lain-lain sumber asli yang akan digunakan sebagai input untuk pengeluaran. Bagaimana fizikal semula jadi mempengaruhi perniagaan? Fizikal. Kewujudan faktor fizikal akan memudahkan perjalanan perniagaan di satu kawasan. Contohnya, penghantaran minyak kelapa sawit akan menjadi lebih cepat dengan adanya fizikal seperti jalan raya, landasan kereta api, dan sebagainya. Semula jadi. Perniagaan perlu menyedari pelbagai tren dalam persekitaran semula jadi, yaitu contohnya jika berlaku kekurangan bahan mentah, peningkatan harga input, peningkatan populasi dan campur tangan kerajaan dalam pengurusan sumber semula jadi. Contohnya penurunan harga getah akan memberi kesan kepada kos pengeluaran. 
Ini adalah contoh-contoh fizikal atau semula jadi. Akhir sekali kita masuk kepada 1.4C iaitu pengaruh pihak berkepentingan dan persekitaran umum terhadap perniagaan. Pihak berkepentingan merupakan faktor yang boleh dikawal dan akan memberikan kesan secara langsung kepada perniagaan. Contohnya, pertambahan pelanggan akan memberikan peningkatan hasil kepada perniagaan, iaitu kesan secara langsung. Begitu juga jika berlaku pengurangan dalam pelanggan, ini akan menyebabkan pengurangan terhadap hasil perniagaan. Persekitaran umum pula tidak boleh dikawal, tetapi boleh mempengaruhi perniagaan secara tidak langsung. Contohnya, perubahan teknologi adalah sesuatu yang tidak boleh dikawal dan boleh menyebabkan kos perniagaan meningkat jika perniagaan membeli teknologi baru dengan harga yang tinggi. Justeru itu, kedua-dua persekitaran ini perlu dinilai pada masa yang sama kerana akan memberi kesan kepada perniagaan. Okey, kita sudah tamat untuk topik ini. Sekarang, sila cuba jawab soalan-soalan ini. Nyatakan empat elemen persekitaran umum yang boleh mempengaruhi perniagaan. Soalan yang kedua, bagaimanakah faktor sosio budaya boleh mempengaruhi sesebuah perniagaan? Serta berikan satu contoh yang sesuai. Itu saja untuk kali ini. Sekian terima kasih. Pada hari ini kita akan mempelajari subtopik 1.5 iaitu entiti perniagaan. Objektif pembelajaran kita pada hari ini terbahagi kepada dua iaitu yang pertama menjelaskan pemilikan organisasi perniagaan dan yang kedua membandingkan antara entiti perniagaan. Entiti perniagaan didefinisikan sebagai jenis milikan perniagaan menurut undang-undang sesebuah perniagaan. Pada hari ini kita akan mempelajari empat bentuk entiti perniagaan iaitu pemilikan tunggal, perkongsian, syarikat dan juga koperasi. Pemilikan tunggal merupakan entiti perniagaan yang paling banyak beroperasi di mana-mana negara termasuklah Malaysia. Ciri-ciri perniagaan ini yang mudah dan ringkas menyebabkan ianya sangat digemari oleh individu yang ingin memulakan perniagaan. Berikut adalah beberapa contoh entiti perniagaan milikan tunggal yang ada di Malaysia. Seterusnya kita akan mempelajari ciri-ciri entiti perniagaan berbentuk pemilikan tunggal. Ciri yang pertama adalah dari segi pemilikan. Perniagaan pemilikan tunggal dimiliki oleh seorang individu sahaja. Dari segi modal pula, ianya disumbangkan oleh pemilik itu sendiri ataupun pinjaman dari keluarga, rakan-rakan dan institusi keuangan. Liabiliti pemilik bagi pemil perniagaan pemilikan tunggal adalah tidak terhad. Iaitu jika berlaku kebengkerapan, maka penyelesaian hutang akan melibatkan harta peribadi pemilik itu sendiri. Dari segi cukai pula, pemilik bagi perniagaan milikan tunggal akan dikenakan cukai persendirian ataupun cukai individu ke atas pendapatan dari perniagaannya. Perniagaan milikan tunggal didaftarkan dengan Suruhanjaya Syarikat Malaysia iaitu SSM. Perjalanan perniagaan milikan tunggal adalah tertahluk ataupun terikat dengan Akta Perniagaan 1956. Manakala dari segi penubuhan perniagaan milikan tunggal pula, ianya adalah sangat mudah dan tidak melibatkan prosedur yang rumit. Dari segi pengurusan perniagaan, 
Perniagaan milikan tunggal diuruskan sendiri oleh pemiliknya dan beliau bebas membuat keputusan berkaitan aktif per, aktiviti perniagaannya tanpa campur tangan dari pihak lain. Jangka hayat bagi perniagaan milikan tunggal adalah tidak kekal dan ianya akan terbubar dengan sendirinya disebabkan oleh kematian pemilik. Bagi laporan kewangan untuk perniagaan milikan tunggal pula, ianya tidak perlu didedahkan kepada sesiapa dan hanya untuk kegunaan pemilik itu sendiri. Seterus, seterusnya, kita akan mempelajari bentuk entiti perniagaan yang kedua iaitu perkongsian. Perkongsian merupakan perniagaan yang dibentuk secara gabungan dan persetujuan antara dua atau lebih individu dengan tujuan untuk mendapatkan keuntungan. Kebiasaannya perniagaan ini suka untuk dikenal pasti, melainkan dengan merujuk kepada daftar perniagaan. Berikut adalah beberapa contoh entiti perniagaan perkongsian yang ada di Malaysia. Seterusnya, kita akan mempelajari ciri-ciri perniagaan perkongsian secara mendalam. Ciri yang pertama dari segi pemilikan, Perniagaan perkongsian dimiliki antara 2 hingga 20 orang pemiliknya. Dari segi modal pula, ianya disumbangkan oleh rakan kongsi dan pinjaman dari institusi keuangan. Liabiliti pemilik ataupun rakan kongsi adalah tidak terhad, sama seperti perniagaan milikan tunggal, iaitu jika berlaku kebenkerapan, penyelesaian hutang akan melibatkan harta peribadi rakan kongsi. Setiap rakan kongsi akan dikenakan cukai persendirian ataupun cukai individu ke atas pendapatan dari perniagaan perkongsian. Perniagaan perkongsian juga didaftarkan dengan Suruhan Jaya Syarikat Malaysia. Perjalanan perniagaan perkongsian perlulah terikat dengan Akta Perniagaan 1956 dan Akta Perkongsian 1961. Rakan kongsi dalam perniagaan perkongsian juga terikat dengan ikatan perkongsian yang telah dipersetujui semasa memulakan perniagaan. Bagi penubuhan perniagaan perkongsian pula, ianya adalah mudah sama seperti perniagaan milikan tunggal. Ianya tidak melibatkan prosedur yang rumit. Dari segi pengurusan perniagaan pula, Perniagaan perkongsian diuruskan secara bersama oleh rakan kongsi yang aktif dan keputusan perniagaan adalah keputusan bersama. Perniagaan perkongsian amat mudah untuk terbubar jika berlaku perubahan dalam daftar perniagaan. Bagi laporan kewangan pula, ianya hanya perlu didedahkan kepada rakan kongsi sahaja. Berikut adalah beberapa situasi yang boleh berlaku dalam perniagaan perkongsian. Cabaran utamanya adalah mewujudkan persefahaman antara rakan kongsi. Jika gagal, ia boleh membawa kepada pembubaran perniagaan perkongsian. Seterusnya, kita akan mempelajari entiti perniagaan berbentuk syarikat. Entiti ini terdiri daripada dua iaitu yang pertama syarikat sendirian berhad dan yang kedua syarikat berhad ataupun dikenali, dikenali juga sebagai syarikat awam berhad. Kedua-dua jenis entiti ini mempunyai banyak persamaan tetapi berbeza dalam beberapa aspek. Berikut adalah beberapa contoh syarikat yang beroperasi di Malaysia. Seterusnya, kita akan mempelajari ciri-ciri entiti perniagaan berbentuk syarikat. Yang pertama dari segi pemilikan, syarikat sendirian berhad dimiliki oleh 1 hingga 50 orang pemilik. Manakala bagi syarikat berhad pula, ianya dimiliki lebih dari 2 orang bergantung kepada jumlah saham yang diterbitkan. Modal perniagaan bagi syarikat disumbang oleh pelabur melalui terbitan saham dan juga liabiliti dari terbitan bond dan pinjaman dari institusi keuangan. 
Liabiliti pemilik syarikat adalah terhad. Berbeza dengan liabiliti bagi pemilik perniagaan perkongsian dan juga milikan tunggal. Iaitu jika berlaku kebengkerapan, penyelesaian hutang tidak akan melibatkan harta peribadi dan terhad kepada jumlah saham yang dilaburkan sahaja. Dari segi cukai pula, perniagaan berbentuk syarikat dikenakan cukai syarikat. Perniagaan berbentuk syarikat juga didaftarkan dengan Suruhan Jaya Syarikat Malaysia dan perjalanan perniagaan syarikat terikat dengan Akta Syarikat 1965 Pindaan 2016. Penubuhan perniagaan berbentuk syarikat adalah rumit kerana ia melibatkan prosedur dan dokumen yang khusus seperti mana yang ada dalam tata wujud dan tata urus syarikat. Ciri yang seterusnya adalah pengurusan perniagaan di mana bagi syarikat ianya diuruskan oleh pengurus yang dibayar gaji dan hala tuju syarikat ditentukan oleh ahli lembaga pengarah syarikat. Jangka hayat perniagaan berbentuk syarikat pula adalah lebih kekal dan suka terbubar, berbeza dengan bentuk milikan tunggal dan juga perkongsian. Bagi laporan kewangan pula, untuk syarikat sendiri yang berhad, ianya perlu didedahkan kepada pelabur sahaja iaitu pemegang saham. Manakala bagi syarikat berhad pula, ianya perlu didedahkan kepada pelabur dan juga perlu didedahkan kepada masyarakat umum melalui terbitan prospektus dalam akhbar. Dan yang terakhir sekali, kita akan mempelajari entiti perniagaan koperasi. Berbanding entiti perniagaan lain iaitu milikan tunggal, perkongsian dan juga syarikat yang bermotifkan keuntungan, koperasi lebih kepada meningkatkan kebajikan ekonomi dan sosial ahlinya. Berikut adalah beberapa contoh per, uh, koperasi yang ada di Malaysia. Ciri-ciri koperasi Koperasi biasanya dimiliki oleh sekurang-kurangnya 50 orang ahli. Dari segi modalnya pula, ianya disumbangkan oleh yuran ahli dan pinjaman dari institusi kewangan. Liabiliti bagi ahli koperasi adalah terhad sama seperti liabiliti bagi pemilik syarikat iaitu jika berlaku kebengkerapan, penyelesaian hutang tidak akan melibatkan harta peribadi dan terhad kepada jumlah yuran ahli sahaja. Koperasi didaftarkan dengan Suruhanjaya Koperasi Malaysia iaitu SKM. Perjalanan koperasi pula terikat dengan Akta Koperasi 1993 Pindaan 2007. Dari segi penubuhan, koperasi melibatkan prosedur yang rumit dalam penubuhannya sama seperti penubuhan syarikat. Pengurusan koperasi pula diuruskan oleh ahli koperasi yang aktif dan hala tuju koperasi ditentukan oleh ahli lembaga pengarah koperasi yang telah dilantik semasa mesyuarat agung tahunan. Jangka hayat bagi koperasi adalah kekal dan suka terbubar. Manakala dari segi laporan kewangan koperasi pula hanya didedahkan kepada ahli-ahlinya sahaja semasa mesyuarat agung tahunan. Selesailah sudah kita mempelajari empat bentuk entiti perniagaan dan ciri-cirinya. Seterusnya, bahagian kedua akan membincangkan beberapa, beberapa aspek perbezaan dalam entiti perniagaan yang telah pun kita pelajari. Perbezaan untuk keempat-empat entiti perniagaan dapat dikelaskan kepada enam ciri yang berbeza, iaitu bilangan ahli, Sumber modal, liabiliti, kaedah pengurusan, pendedahan laporan kewangan dan juga cukai. Untuk kefahaman yang lebih jelas, para pelajar bolehlah melengkapkan kotak maklumat perbezaan entiti perniagaan berikut. Sebagai kesimpulan, 
Bentuk-bentuk entiti perniagaan yang telah kita pelajari adalah berbeza dari segi ciri-cirinya. Perniaga yang baru memulakan perniagaan akan cenderung memilih entiti perniagaan berbentuk milikan tunggal kerana ianya mudah untuk ditubuhkan dan akan berubah dari semasa ke semasa kepada bentuk pemilikan lain seperti perkongsian dan syarikat apabila, apabila perniagaan semakin berkembang. Baiklah, setakat ini sahaja pembelajaran kita pada hari ini. Sekian, terima kasih. What is information technology? IT or information technology refers to the development, maintenance and use of computer software, hardware and networks. It includes their use for the processing and distribution of data. Data refers to information, facts, statistics gathered together for reference, storage or analysis. Software includes all the computer programs within a computer. Computers cannot work without software. Hardware, in this context, refers to the physical components of a computer system. The screen, mouse and motherboard, for example, are hardware items. Information technology is commonly used as a synonym for computers and computer networks but it also encompasses other information distribution technologies such as television and telephones. Many different products or services within an economy are associated with information technology. What is the difference between information technology and computer science? Computer science focuses on efficiently programming computers. Computer scientists use mathematical algorithms. They study theoretical algorithms and the practical problems that exist in implementing them through computer software and hardware. AI, computer graphics and programming are subfields of computer science. Software engineering is also part of computer science. Information technology, on the other hand, involves installing, organizing and maintaining computer systems. It also includes designing and operating databases and networks. Thank you for watching this Markets Business News video on information technology. Information technology is the use of computers to store, retrieve, transmit, and manipulate data, or information, often in the context of a business or other enterprise. IT is considered to be a subset of information and communications technology. Humans have been storing, retrieving, manipulating, and communicating information since the Sumerians in Mesopotamia developed writing in about 3000 BC, but the term information technology in its modern sense first appeared in a 1958 article published in the Harvard Business Review. Authors Harold J. Levitt and Thomas L. Whistler commented that the new technology does not yet have a single established name. We shall call it information technology. Their definition consists of three categories, techniques for processing, the application of statistical and mathematical methods to decision making, and the simulation of higher order thinking through computer programs. The term is commonly used as a synonym for computers and computer networks, but it also encompasses other information distribution technologies such as television and telephones. Several products or services within an economy are associated with information technology, including computer hardware, software, electronics, semiconductors, internet, telecom equipment, and e-commerce. Based on the storage and processing technologies employed, it is possible to distinguish four distinct phases of IT development, pre-mechanical, mechanical, electromechanical, and electronic. 
This article focuses on the most recent period, which began in about 1940. Hey, what's up? John Sonmez here from simpleprogrammer.com. So I got a question about information technology. What's that? <laughs> I almost tossed this question out because I was like, really? But then I realized that there's actually some value in this question. So let me read it here. Uh, this is from Oad, and he says, he's not sure about his name. He says, Oad pronounced Oad, I guess. Okay, well, I guess, I'll, I'll guess Oad too then. He says, hi John, I tried to look after videos about IT at your channel and I found none. I hope you can share with others by posting a video about what your thoughts on, on this is. Jobs, what is IT, uh, is it worth it? Uh, and he says, no, I'm not lazy. I looked after information and I actually found some pretty okay stuff. I guess I just want to hear one of your stories about your experience, if there is any with the subject. Thank you very much for reading this email. Have a wonderful day. All right, so I don't mean to, I'm not, not making, don't mean to make fun of you. This is a, a, a valid question, I think, is because, and the reason why this is a valid question, I mean, because some of you are like, oh, that's kind of dumb, like IT, what, you know, what is that, information technology, what are you even talking about here? That, that, that's the problem, <laughs> is I think it's pretty ambiguous. I was just thinking about this, right, when, when I was thinking about tossing out the question, and I said, well, wait a minute, what does IT actually mean? today, right? What, is, what, is it, what does it mean? Information technology, right? We, we kind of just toss that around and we don't really know what it means. And it was a little bit more distinct, I think, maybe 10 years ago. But now, what, what, is it, what does it involve? Especially for those of you that are kind of new software developers, you know, some of you are confused. Honestly, I've gotten some emails. What's the difference between IT and software development and what does it encompass, right? In the corporate world, you know, we, could, we call it IT and, you know, and, and we kind of just know what that is, but, but what does it actually mean? So IT information technology, this is my definition of it. It's basically the entire scope of all of the jobs and everything that's related to computers and technology in business, okay? So that, that's sort of changed a lot over, over the, the years, right? Because we used to have IT people, and IT people were the people that would come and set up your computer at your corporate job and install Microsoft Windows on there and image your system, and if your hard drive crashes, they would fix it, and they would set up your network and all that, and I think there's still you know, that, that part of IT, but IT is also now the DevOps people, the, the developer operations people who are part developer and ho part operations people who do the infrastructure, right? And also like make sure that the software gets deployed, right? And IT is technically you, right? As, as a software developer, right? You're IT as well because you're part of IT. I think that was always, always kind of part of it. So information technology is sort of that whole big scope of every single job role and responsibility that has to do with computers in, in the business setting. That's, that's how I would define it. Some people might define it differently, but that's, that's really what it is. So the IT industry is that, that entire, entire industry that, and, and it's really big, right? But a lot of things are changing, right? Because again, we used to use the term to talk about the help desk people, the, the people that would set up your computer and networking and stuff. But a lot of times now we've got the cloud, right? We've got AWS, right? Where we're basically using virtual machines and we're using cloud-based hosting. And so a lot of companies aren't, they don't even really have IT. They're outsourcing IT essentially because that infrastructure, those, those guys that used to run those network wires and used to you know, give you an IP address, they're not needed anymore because we were able to solve that with technology. Now, there's still plenty of those people around, but I'm just saying in general, a lot of companies where IT was sort of when I was you know, earlier in my software development career, it was just like, duh. Now it's actually, there's a lot of new software developers that are like, well, what is that? I don't, I don't understand it. Don't we just spin up a, a, a machine like in the cloud? Like, what, what is IT? I don't, I don't get it. Like there's software developers and we write code and, and that's it. And then we have DevOps guys and we deploy the code. That's it. And that's, you know, IT in, in some companies has been eliminated based, based on that, right? You don't necessarily have to have a network guy. You don't necessarily have to have a help desk guy because you've got this, uh, you know, this ability as this technology's changed. So 
that's that's really what it is and that's you know and it's it's something that like i said is evolving and so you know hopefully that clears up some of you are like oh this is like what what are you even talking about john this is like dumb I, I get that, you know, if, if, you, if you've been in the industry for a while, but I want to make this video for some of the you newer developers that don't quite understand like this, because you might have never seen IT like, like we used to, right? When you used to have to, you know, get a subnet address and, and split up uh, the, the IP and, and put the subnet mask in and, and all this stuff, and you had to have someone that, that knew how to do all that stuff because now a lot of it is automatic or, or you don't need that or you're running wires and twisting you know cables and all, all that all that kind of stuff right and there's, there'll still always be some of that but but a lot of a lot of companies can can actually exist with everyone remote and you don't actually have a real IT department in the company and that's uh, I think that's a wave of the future I think that that kind of IT is going to disappear but the, the general IT that includes software developers and all of those other roles, that's always going to be around, obviously. So, all right. If you like this video, if you want to get more videos like this one, where I answer questions and give you life advice and tell you all kinds of all kinds of fun stuff and, and stories, go ahead and click that subscribe button below if you haven't already. And I'll talk to you next time. Take care. All right, guys. Let's discuss. Uh the part one of the subject information technology where we have uh, two key terms to understand right now one is information the other one is technology right so to basically go with the context of what is information right first and foremost thing we need to know is information so guys tell me generally whenever you are talking about the term information what comes to your mind so you're talking about the word information we say I'm going to give you some information or I'm going to give you, I'm, I'm going to get some information. When we are using the word information, what do we mean by information? Data. Some kind of a data, right? Okay, that is something. Tell me what all comes to your mind, we will discuss. See, there is no way how we need to buy heart any definition. We can always go with understanding what the concept is and then fundamentally going up and coining a definition. You don't really have to make something you know, uh, like by hearting or you know, setting up things. Just ask a few questions, get the answers, join them. That will make up a definition, right? So, guys, in that context, what is information? Let let throw your opinions and we will cover it. So, for somebody said it is data. It is not definitely only data because then what is the difference between data and information? Both are same. No. So, data is something else. Information is something else. Uh, what else? What else comes to your mind? It's some kind of a message, some kind of an opinion, some kind of a thought. Then? Processed data. Processed data. Okay, somebody says, if data, that means, so processed data they're saying. So first of all, you gave me this word data. I asked you what is information. You are giving me another, you know, word which I don't know the meaning of now. See, an answer to one question should not be another question. Correct? Uh, so you give me the answer for this also, no? I asked you a question, you should give me answer, not one more question. But what you are giving me is another question, so I don't know what is data, so tell me what is data, no? You said data, what is data? So guys, basically, if you look at what is information, the first question that we have asked is what? So you told me data, somebody told me message, somebody told me process data, right? And then somebody is telling me it could be anything useful. All those is fine. But what ideally is data? Anything in this world, you know, is modeled in the form of data only. Anything is modeled in the form of data. All the real world objects are modeled in the form of data which means what which means data is a mere collection of data is mere collection of some kind of a facts let me throw an example to make this concept a little more clear right for example you know when you're walking you saw a banner which reads like class start on the 25th right you saw a banner like this where it was saying that Classes start on 
25th. You saw something and this is absolutely ridiculous to understand. But is it a fact that classes are starting somewhere? Yeah, it's a fact. Class is starting. Where? Which class? Now, a medical student is walking and he saw this array, some class is starting. An engineering student saw this. A CA student saw this. All these people saw this board, but nobody could make anything out of it. So they just saw and walked past it. Why? Because it didn't make relevance to anybody. Class are studying. Are be very clear. Which class? So I don't know. And since that is something that is not clear or it's very vague here, we really don't know what class is going on. Now, same set of people are walking on the road, but they saw this banner right now. Where CA classes start on 25th. Now the medical student who walk past, the engineering student who walk past, they will simply walk past it. They won't give any second thought to it. Why? Because is it giving greater clarity than the first example or not? Yeah. So, with a little more information, we are able to understand. I mean with a little more clarity, we are able to understand. So guys, is this board useful to somebody now? Is this board useful to somebody? Who is that somebody? A CA student. Correct? Now please understand. As we add more and more clarity, now guys, he saw this board in February. So ideally, what will he think? 25th is Feb 25th. That's what he thinks. It could be March 25th also. So it's lacking more clarity. Now wait, it's not done there. CA class are starting on 25th. One CPD student saw this. And he's like, hey, some class are starting. Then he's like, you don't know that it's CPT or IPCC or final. Then they walk past it again. So those CA students stopped and saw this. He is not really going to the next step. Why? Because of lack of clarity. So now what they did is to do something like this. Now who are the students who will stop at this board? The exactly IPCC students only will stop. Why? Because they know that CPT student will walk past. IPCC are studying, Chalo, not for us. Finance student will say, Are IPCC. Again, not for us. So those two people are going off. Understood? They are not there. So only IPCC candidates will start, but they are also problem. They are also not done yet. Sir, I already finished my group 1. See IPCC class means which one? Group 1 or group 2 are. We don't know anything. So here see IPCC group 2 classes, a little more clarity on the board. Then he is like, sir, fantastic, I want group 2 only. See IPCC group 2 classes are starting on the 25th. Sir, they didn't tell where, what class. Advanced account, the odd aid, IT or SM, I had no clarity, sir. Are so much is there, there's still no clarity. That means the deeper you go, the greater you can, you know, get information. But this is not information as yet, it's still some fact. Somewhere some group two class is starting. So all these mere collection of facts are what? Data. But when you add something to it which makes it more meaningful, what will it become? It becomes information. So guys, from data which is a mere collection of facts, if I am processing it, if I am what? Processing it, then the activity is called data processing which makes information. But guys, tell me one thing, CA group 2 class start on, let me add up, 25th. Will now somebody seeing this will be impressed by the board and they understand? Of course, here, call. Some number is given. Is that enough for somebody to at least do their next move? Because after calling I can find out, hey, where is your institute? Where is it? Who is taking the class? You didn't give any faculty details. You didn't give subject details. You didn't give any timings. Huh? They will tell you everything on the phone. Have you seen that board saying, for more info, for more information, dial. We've seen so many boards which say for more information dial. Which means what? Which means that you are giving something. That this means this is not the info then. This is only telling you some facts. If you want to know more about this fact, you call me. On call I will tell you. So guys, mere collection of facts doesn't make up to information. Then what makes up to information is what? Processed form of now tell me one more thing. Do you believe this board is processed? Like they believe that this board is very good? Yes, it's much better than the past, right? Hello, from the first board that I wrote, this is much better or not? Yes. Sir. yes. But 
मेडिकल स्टूडेंट वेंट पास दिस बोर्ड अगेन डज इट मेक सेंस टू अरे यू ओनली टोल्ड मी नाउ दैट दिस इज मच बेटर देन पास बट इट शुड हेल्प मेडिकल स्टूडेंट इट वॉन्ट हेल्प वाई बिकॉज राइट फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग इट इज नॉट रिलेवेंट टू हिम आर यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग data what was given there is meaningless in the initial the first board that i wrote class taught on that was meaningless to everybody correct then we are added all these we glorified the board does it make some sense to somebody now but does it make sense to a medical student and engineering student not even now that means is this data or information is it data or information why is the dilemma there in your answer why are you not able to tell whether it is data or information because you don't know who is reading the board yes or no so guys if the ca student who is doing ipcc is reading the board is this information or not yes. anybody else reading this board for them it is data. that means the same thing which is data for somebody can it be information to somebody else yes. absolutely can it be like that or not that is the best part of the story so who decides what is information and who decides what is data the user. the user that is the recipient so i'm now going to introduce a key character in this definition who's going to decide what is information and what is data so right i already asked the question of what what is information information is a processed form of data so guys information i'm asking my first question what is information what is information processed form of processed form of data okay very good but this is processed form of data but this is still meaningless to so many people right so a key character is introduced in the definition who is that the guy who is receiving it called the recipient okay yeah user we will call him user little later right now we will call him recipient because it could be anybody right so guys information is a process form of data which is meaningful to whom guys meaningful to who is that character meaningful to the recipient which is meaningful to the recipient so this guy is the most important guy in the definition chalo that is a very simple point what is information process form of data to whom it is but that's not it what is more important is how does it matter to somebody chalo now the recipient received the process form of data guys an ipc student read this board what does he do after that only two options what are the two probable options either he will join the class or not join the class yes or no so that means he will take a decision or not guys why is the information meaningful to him so that he can make a decision right process form of data which is meaningful to the recipient for what purpose so i am asking next question why for decision making for decision making guys is he making on the spot decision or 25th is a future date no don't be bother about today's date so somebody could read this board on 10th somebody can read this board on 25th morning also so are they making a decision right now or are they making a decision for future could be anything yes or no if i'm reading it on february 10th it's a decision for me whether to join the class on 25th or not that is one decision if i'm reading the decision i mean uh, board on 25th morning it is an immediate decision should i join the class today or not today? so guys by using this meaningful information can i make decisions yes when that is the last question when either now now or in future so guys we are just facing four questions what who why and when so come on everybody together let me tell me now what is data data is only a mere collection of facts but when it comes to information what is the information information is a process form of data which is meaningful to the recipient acha for what purpose for decision making when now or in future now is called current current means what right now 
फ्यूचर इज कॉल्ड प्रोग्रेसिव प्रोग्रेसिव मीन्स एज वी मूव ऑन एज वी गो राइट चलो पुट अप two important things that we learned right now let's put it up so before the first chapter starts you have a little blank space you can use that blank space to write down couple of important definitions put up the first side reading guys call it data data first definition that you are writing is data what is data guys the random collection of data is a random collection of make you note here data is a random collection of facts and figures data is a random collection of facts and figures that's a first and very simple definition but that's not what we need that's only raw we need to process that we need to make it more glorified we need to use it for decision making and all that so that makes a lot of sense put up the next side heading called information and when you write the definition also write it in four parts so that it's very easy for you to understand i'll tell you what the four parts are you can go with it right this is just an explanation of it we will write it now ah uh, put up the side reading information what will you write with the first line is what information is processed form of data all in first line information is processed form of data that is line 1 processed form of data that is line 1 which is meaningful to the recipient line number 2 which is meaningful to the recipient which is meaningful to the recipient for for in the third point read on for current or progressive decision making right current or progressive in the third line write the word decision making in the fourth process form of data which is meaningful to the recipient for current or progressive decision making i'm just reordering that to make a very meaningful statement what is that we are doing process form of data which is meaningful to the recipient i just moved this for current or progressive decision making for current or progressive decision making that is third and point number 4 why decision making so guys these are the four basic point that we need to understand now when we join all these that's what makes the definition of what information is chalo everybody tell me along what is it information is process form of data meaningful to the recipient okay for what for current or progressive decision understood guys that's exactly what information is all about so we need understood data we understood information okay all together different from this is the term technology right which is what we are so much addicted to right technology so technology has changed technology has brought in so much thanks to technology we are telling so many things all that i want you to tell now is what do you know about this particular term called technology come on tell me what is your insight or an idea about this word technology so we are now seeing data and information we have seen now we are going to see this word called technology so tell me what do you mean by technology you are all using phones you are all using computers phones right everything's become very much mobile things have become very easy so what what do you mean by technology tell me that technology now this is a come on quick we got to just move on we are not spending so much time on this come on fast what do you mean by technology anything what is technology except for instance we had uh, you know wooden wheels wooden wheels were there right you know we we all studied the early man story on you know how he used to make fire out of you know stones and then you know like wooden wheels we have seen how man has you know found out wooden wheels and then the you know the evolution theory from there on we went on now we use you know like the railways uses wheels of iron right like the roadways are using rubber wheels right so we found out different thing no you can't kind of imagine to use rubber on uh, you know the electric uh, i mean uh, in the same in the same trains the trains are running on electric mode so now we don't even have uh, wheels we have connected magnetic platforms so they like you have speed trains and all that with no wheels they're all moving on a 
small you know magnetic path so they're, they're very much different so now how things have changed evolved that means what they made things better and what i was talking is about a wooden wheel and right now i'm talking about the same thing without even the wheels so there is an evolution in everything right you used to take clothes and you know rinse them well hit them hard to a stone and then get them washed right that was one process of washing right now all that you need to do is to throw it into a machine shut the door connect it to a water pipe switch on done it's washed rinsed dried and then you get the you know dry cloth out fully automatic washing machine so what did a washing machine do here what did a car do what did a bike do what did a pen do right if you go back centuries right we have all seen those transcripts that people have written have you seen stone engravings but they didn't have this pen now right now it's become an easy platform for me i'm using this pen so that i can communicate whatever i want i'm using this board that time they neither had a board nor a pen nor they had a paper nor they had your uh, okay this is a marker for me you have a pen so you are writing something so what we leave for our future is what something they have left from their side are all on stone engravings today they are all there in museums right or otherwise you know they they found some dry leaves on which they have crushed green leaves made some you know kind of a liquid out of that and then they use that to write something that is their kind of putting up things or you know like some king had very serious things to write and he found nothing so then they use their blood to write you know, today they are all in the museum so that point of time they didn't find today we have ink to write that time they couldn't think of making one so they use their own blood so today also we use that's a different thing different people use it for different purposes ha huh. so nevertheless right but anyway either way so today this is not considered to be ink today this is considered to be you know little out of the box right ha huh. for whatever reason they are but guys from all these what we need to understand is what something that has made the life more easier something that has helped us to push it to the next level which is what is called what technology anything that makes our life easier is technology right we used to you know like household you talk about a household like washing utensils washing clothes cleaning the house sweeping the house mopping the house you name it and we have something a device which is meant for that right? i am telling you as simple as writing like say 11th century carvings you go and you know you are very surprised in the museum to see all that maybe you know like a two centuries later whatever we have written in the notebooks that also could be you know uh, maybe two centuries later there will be nothing like a notebook to write everything may be printed two generations later what we leave could be the entire data that is stored on cloud today itself we are not storing anything in books and papers anymore those days of big big store rooms big libraries when was the last time you went to a library to pick up a book everything is available on e platform you have tools like kindle to read you know like so there's no real reason to store anything anymore in physical form so already we are in the process of saving environment no more cutting down of trees and no more wasting of paper so right it has its own benefits like say when you talk about a concept like information technology what is the technology that you talking about i right now i'm not even talking about information technology i'm blind to this word information right now i'm just talking about technology so anything that eases our life anything that makes things or jobs easier but how this is the concept but very important question is still pending how do you do that pen is it a small tool right right now the marker that i'm having is it a tool some time back i told you washing what is it called as washing machine so it could be a tool or it could be a machine or it could be any mechanism the use of various tools the use of some techniques the use of some machines use of all this which is making your job easy that's what technology is all about what is technology the use of tools techniques and machines to make life more easier i mean it need not be coined as make life more easier you can say to make anything more easier that's what is technology all right first put up the definition of technology then now i want all of you to use all your intelligence to join both this and figure out what exactly information technology would be 
We will do that in a short while as we write on the definition of technology. Put up the third side heading, technology. And write on the definition for what technology is. What is technology, guys? The use of technology is the use of machines slash tools slash techniques. Machines, tools, or techniques to perform jobs. To perform jobs. To perform jobs with more ease. With more ease. If there are tools, machines, and techniques to perform jobs with more ease, then it is called what? Technology. If you are using any tools, machines, and techniques to perform those jobs with more ease. Sir, is it making my life more easier? Yeah, absolutely. Then it is a tool. Sir, this particular tool is helping me erase. It's making my life easier. Very good. Otherwise, I might as, as well have to use a cloth. I have a you know, marker to write. Or if not this day, should I find something else? Maybe earlier we used a blackboard and a white chalk. Now we are using a whiteboard and a black ink. It differs, you know, like things change. Earlier I was using a bicycle. Then we started adding a small motor to it. So that where the... You know, the pedaling becomes a little more faster. Then we found out something like a moped without any gear or any, any system. Then they found the gear system so that it could be shifted and become more faster. And then we found four wheelers with much bigger engines. Then we found big trucks, big buses, right? Then we found the helicopters and the airplanes and then technology like, you know, making it things more easier. And with the current trends, you can also say making it more faster. Right? There is already a bike in existence. You are bringing a faster bike. There is already a car. You are finding out some new mechanism to go even more faster. There is already a plane. You are finding one more plane to make it even more faster. That means technology is not just about using tools and machines now. The improvements in technology are about finding new devices or things which can make it even more faster. So it's like if you are saying or making the statement because technology is changing. Technology is not changing. Technology is something that is dynamic. Technology, the feature of technology is not to change. It is an inherent component of technology. Technology by nature itself is not stable. You understood? What way of communication was in the past when it comes to talk about information? Earlier if I have to send information, what do I do to send information? Remember those days where you have seen those old movies where pigeons were sent? Right? Uh, that may or may not go to the right destination. Correct or not. If it finds somebody in between, right, and believes them to be the destination, right. So there's a possibility that something like that can happen. But, you know, yeah, but they were trained. So, you know, that's, that's not something that's uh, you know, discussed now. It's there from centuries. Pigeons basically are trained like that to go to the right destination and come back to its, you know, the owner. So that they're trained like that. That's fine. That's one way of doing it. Then we started sending messengers, right? That is people physically carrying out uh, the message with themselves, not on any paper or any note or anything. Then we started sending them, you know, through a uh, person, but through a paper to some distance. Then we started using postal systems. Today we have the ultimate and the most easiest way of sending information through an instant messaging application or an email. Business purpose, we use email and for personal communication, we are using instant messaging applications like the WhatsApp or Hike or so many messengers, you name it, there are their instant messaging apps. So, from where? From tying the message to a pigeon's leg to, you know, sending it across the globe in less than a second to instant messaging, technology has evolved. So, that's what technology is all about. But right now, all that I'm asking is not this anymore. And okay, let this be there because that is what technology is all about. We also have the definition of information. All that I want to do is take a minute's time and coin a definition for what do you think this information technology. So let me help you a little bit with that. How does information come guys? If I want information as the output, what should be the input guys? What should be the input? Data, very good. So if data is given as input, the transformation of that will bring out information. Okay, I'm not revealing anything more. I want a definition for information technology. Take a minute's time. I want you to phrase it out like what is being done by what to get what. I think I've given you the answer in that itself. Right? So come on. Use the concept of how we got out information. Use the concept of 
machines, tools and techniques and then just we have a solution in that itself. Yeah, can you make one definition? What is it? Come on. Yeah, whatever, whoever it is, come on, just go with the definition. Okay, it may be right or wrong. Anyway, we are going to write the definition in a minute. Chalo, chalo, tell me what is it? What do you think information technology is all about? So, what is the output? Okay, let's do it like this. Let's let's make it Q and A. So let's make it easy. What is the output that we want? Information. Very good. How do you get it? By processing something. What is that something? Data. Data. How should that processing be done? We don't know that. Either it can be manual or by use of these machines and tools. Correct or not? So, if you are using any of these tools, techniques or machines to process data and get out information, that's all. That is information technology. Right? So, if I have to coin it now like this. So, if I say the use of tools, techniques or some machines to transform data into information is called as information technology. Is that true? What is it? What did I say? Come on, everybody, how do we go with it? The use of tools, techniques or machines for what? For converting or transforming data into? So if you are doing any of that, then it is called what? Information technology. Guys, please tell me in today's practical world, what is that device or what is that machine that is helping us convert data into information? Computers. Computers. Very good. That is exactly why IT is so synonymous to the use of the word computer. So, sometimes we can go one step further and tell IT is all about IT is all about use of computers. IT is all about the use of computers. How you are going to use computers in various genres of business in various areas of business to deal various aspects of business let me throw a very quick example like say 10 years before right the banking system was not like how it is today correct do you accept the fact or not we used to stand in long queues to deposit money to withdraw money in fact to update passbook also we have to stand in lengthy queues today there is no concept of passbook only why because by the time you pick up your cash from the counter and turn back your mobile phone is already ringing saying that your account is debited by so on so on. Same way if somebody deposited cash in your account or some online credit has happened to your account directly. You are getting messages. And imagine if you have to always go only to one branch to withdraw or deposit cash. How difficult it is to be. Like say earlier I used to stay in area, particular area A. From there I shifted to area B. Now, I opened a bank account in area A's branch. I moved to area B, which is almost 15 kilometers. If you have to always go to area A's branch to withdraw a deposit cash, imagine what kind of a pain it is. Today, I don't even know where my branch is. I don't even have to. And I don't know, to be very honest, when was the last time I visited my home branch? Not required. The internet application is there. So I can use my banking account on the laptop. Forget about even opening the laptop, we have the application right away on our mobile phone. So, we have come long from where we were. So, today's banking system is absolutely different from what we have seen thanks to technology. Banking is only one area of, you know, uh, idea that I've given you. Education has changed, right? You don't have to always go to a particular place to listen to somebody, right? We have online classes. Right? We have different mediums to reach people. We have webinars. Right? On the web, a seminar is conducted. Right? And then a live Q&A session is possible. The person is somewhere in Delhi. He's addressing whole of the country. And we are all able to live chat and live talk with them. You know, have it, make it a real-time environment. Quite possible. So those, you know, those are not out of imagination. They're pretty much what are happening right now. Thanks to the use of computers. So, IT is very synonymous to the use of what? Computers. Right? Don't worry. At a later point in time, we will have the definition of what IT is and what are the various concepts involved in IT. IT is all about use of computers. Computers are nothing but a combination of hardware and software. So, a lot more stuff is there to catch up. Don't worry. Your second chapter of the syllabus is full of that stuff only. Alright, right now let me quickly take you through what we are going to see in IT. 
as a chartered accountant or basically right now as a chartered accountant student why are you being trained on it what is this punishment right the very fact that we chose commerce is because we don't like all this nonsense right yeah i can understand because we don't like physics we don't like chemistry we don't like real time things we only like concepts right that's one of the reasons why we chose commerce ha huh. so because we not having the attachment towards it but the very fact that you need to understand at this point of time in the market what drives the entire concept is the information technology if today there is some client of yours not using it i i don't even really think that we can even imagine a client who is not using it right so in fact tomorrow if you have to file your exam application you have to know it a little bit of how to use computers so today you can't be an alien to these concepts and say sorry it's not my domain i am not really connected to it we can't definitely say that right so in that context we definitely need to understand how things work right so see here on what information technology is all about and how we are actually trying to figure out what it is we have five chapters in our syllabus to understand what is going on so again guys we are not discussing on how we are going to use information technology in your life or in my life what we are going to do with information technology is again going to be restricted only to a business so both these subjects guys like in strategic management and information technology we are only talking about these two subjects in the context of a business not for you or me we are not dealing strategic management for you or me it's not our personal management i am not talking about time management or i am not talking about your health and wealth management i am talking about strategic management strategies are required by business so that was business management same case here also how it plays a key role in shaping up business right this subject also starts the same definition of what a business is right how it goes further what are various processes that you need to get into how do you go with it this subject has only five chapters again like i said 50 57 marks 50 marks is what you are supposed to uh, write for 57 marks so 58 marks could be something including choice so please be very sure that there are going to be questions from all the chapters so there is nothing that you can leave in choice right because limited syllabus and one good thing about a subject like it sms your questions including audit also your questions are always you know from the book except probably for example if you practice 100 problems in costing maybe a 101th problem with a new adjustment can come in the exam which you have not really practiced but here it's a straight question and if you know what the answer is you score marks otherwise it's straight and simple right of course we will you know towards the end see what to write and how to write and how to prepare that's a different story right now we will only concentrate on understanding the syllabus first right so we are not struggling here to get 40 marks that's not our objective so we have raised our bars already right our minimum lookout for anything in subject should be at what 60 marks that is minimum lookout then depending on your effort you scale up you want 80 you want 90 you want 70 you 